um, and we can obviously get we can pick up from where we left off. Uh, so hopefully my computer won't crash on me this time around. All right, so let me quickly open this up and I can explain to you what digital transformation is all about from the beginning. All right, so I need more than one. Um, so bear with me. I think the best way for me to do it is if I can see it that way. Um, what's in there? Get more than one PDF. I actually want more than one PowerPoint. Let me see if I can find my model one PowerPoint. Uh, ah, there you are, model one PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm just going to download this and then we can take it from there. Okay. Hallelujah. So now we can kick off. Cool. So just go through it. So um, most of you have not been, I've, I'm so used to talking and talking to a lot of you that I always forget to introduce myself. So my name is Keiji Biwa. Um, I consider myself and probably most of the clients I work with consider, my, consider me to be a digital technology strategist, uh, digital business transformation solutions architect. I have a, a BSc uh, Hans from computer science. Sorry, sorry I have a, a computer science degree from uh, Kingston University. And um, I have to be honest with you, I, um, I put the masters on hold um, early this year. Um, I had just my um, dissertation to hand in, but I've been, I've been so busy, I just don't have time to finish it. So I told him to put it on hold out sort of <laughs> next year. So um, as much as I wanted to say, yeah, I have a master's in digital marketing, I actually don't yet. Um, I also almost considered canceling it because it's a waste of my time. Um, what I'm learning is so is so, is so behind in, in terms of what, well, what they are teaching is so behind in terms of what I know. And that's why I put it on hold. Um, but I will finish it just to just to have it on, just to have it there to say I have a master's in that. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Digital Bananas Technology, uh, currently leading an innovative team in the development and deployment of integrated lifestyle applications, customer loyalty and referral mobile apps, and integrated multi-channel marketing and automation. Um, I'm I'm the pioneer of the eWork Experience platform. In 2012, we were shortlisted for the innovation in customer experience. And um, which is amazing, and that was by e consultancy. So that's some level of um, achievement for myself. So I hope that should put you in a position where you feel that I know what I'm talking about. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through digital transformation, go through business strategy, and go through business, uh, digital business uh, transformation as a whole. So, let us now kick off understanding the digital world. That's the first thing we need to do. Let's get started by understanding digital, digital technology, digital strategy, business strategy, digital business uh, transformation. Now, the term digital describes electronic technology that generates, stores, and processes data in terms of two states, positive and uh, non-positive, so that ones and zeros, okay? Where positive express or represents by, is represented by the number one, and non-positive is the number zero. Thus, data transmitted or stored with digital technology is expressed as strings of zeros and one. Now, prior to digital technology, electronic transmission was limited to analog technology. So basically your old phones, you know, where you, um, uh, you have to dial, okay? Which conveys data as electronic signals or varying frequencies or ap amplitudes that are added to carrier waves of a given frequency. So radio, for example. So broadcast and phone transmission as conventionally used analog technology. We're now using what we call digital technology. So things like wireless technology. Okay. So the term digital technology is based uh, is a base um, is a base uh, two process. Digitized information is recorded in binary code of combinations of digits of zeros and ones, also called bits, which represents words and images. So, for example, zero could represent a, or zero could represent come here, come for example. One can represent go. Digital technology enables immense amounts of information to be compressed in one small storage device that can be easily preserved and transported. So if you look at the old days of analog technology, you would have big, massive computers the size of houses. And the, as we now move towards digital, we can compress everything into your mobile phone. Digitization also quickens data transmission speed. Data te uh, digital technology has transformed how people communicate, learn, and work. Telecommunication has relied on digital methods to transmit messages. So 
how did digital how did how digital technology are changing uh digital technologies are changing the way we work and this is actually based on Accenture. Intelligent processes enabling digital technology to create a virtual circle of constant improvement fed by continuous feedback. So what do I mean by that? You can literally look at a manual process and digitize that process, automate that process, and make it more intelligent as a result of being fed by data to improve it. Digital technologies make it possible to identify opportunities for adaptation, analyze the trade-offs, and adapt faster and more efficiently. So what do I mean by this? I think I think what I should do is I should actually show this to you while I am actually while I'm actually doing this. Okay, so um, so I would actually show it to you, and I will use our own system to actually show it to you. So for example, it says that it enables me to understand, uh, to basically adapt and understand what's happening so that I can improve. So let's look at Google Analytics for example. Now imagine the old days where you had a store. In your store, you would, the only way you're going to know if your business is doing well is by how many people are coming into your store. Now, that store is also based on one particular location. If you want to expand, you have to open it in many locations. Now, through digital technology, you can actually build a website and anybody from all over the world can come to your website. So think about Career Insights. Think about the fact that we're based in London. We used to have an office in Manchester. When we digitized and automated our e-work experience platform, we closed down the office in Manchester. Now many of you are calling from all walks of life and you don't need to call me to the office. Let's look at how many people are on this call right now. There are 46 people on this call. My office in London can only take 20 people. So what has digital technology enabled me to do? Digital technology has enabled me to double the capacity that I have and also reach more people from all over the world. And do you know what is really good about that? Rather than me manually asking the 20 people in my office where they come from, I don't need to ask them. As a result of people going to my website, I can actually find out exactly where they come from. I can find out what their age group is. So look at this, for example. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I know without a shadow of a doubt that majority of the people on this call are between the ages of 25 uh, sorry, between the ages of 25 to 34, and also the second, actually, no, the highest is 35 to 44, and then the second highest is 25 to 34. Now, if you are younger than this, if you are younger than this age bracket, uh, or by this demographic, please type in the question box and say you are younger, just to prove to you. So guess what? Rather than me counting, I don't need to count. I can confirm it. It's like magic. So anybody, if you are younger, say that you are younger. Anybody? Okay, well, nobody is younger. Wow, isn't that impressive? So you can see that the demographic is absolutely correct. Okay, so one person is younger, only one person. Okay, only one person is younger. So that person will now account, I'm older, okay, good. So that person will now account, if we look over here, that person will now account for 12.8%. Or six, for the majority are within this age group. So that is what digital technology gives me. It gives me insight. It enables me to know what I'm doing. And then when I look at the gender, it was, you will see that it's almost equal, okay? But we have more men on our platform than we have women. So let's look at this over here. We have actually have men, male, 53%, and female, 20, um, 46%. Now, most likely, that is actually true. But do you know what's really cool? What's really cool is I can actually guarantee right now I can tell you when majority of the people on this platform are from. Okay, so I'm gonna go to location, and on that location, it's telling me already that majority of the people on this call are in the UK and also in Nigeria. Okay, then there are a few people that call that are calling from Canada, a few people calling from Russia, basically a few people from all these places. But the main area for me is Nigeria and UK. And if I look over here, I can see that UK accounts for more. And then Nigeria accounts for the second highest, and then you then have United States and Canada, and it goes all the way down there. But if I go to UK, for example, what actually happens? It will tell me where people actually come from directly when I go based on city. So I'm going to go based on city. And let us now confirm. If you find your city here, let me know. So let's look at the top cities that we have. Okay. So we're going to look at the top cities that we actually have. And you will find that actually a uh, majority of people are from London, Birmingham, Croydon, Manchester, Sheffield, Coventry, Northampton. You can see that there. And then obviously it breaks down from there. So can you all confirm that you're, basically you found your place here? 
Let's look at the box. Yep, city. Yep, you can see that, right? So we're absolutely correct in that respect. So that is what digital technology enables me to do. It gives me insight, stuff that you would have to do through market research. I can now do through what we call market reality, okay, as a result of digital technology. So I hope this is now coming, making sense. Um, and I'm, uh, what I'm going to do uh, for the gentleman who is unmuted, uh, Yinka, you just need to let me know that, okay, you know what, I'm getting what you are saying. And then I guarantee you that you're also speaking on behalf of other people as well. Okay, because there's some people that are shy to ask questions and you can actually be their hero and ask questions for them. I hope it makes sense. Yes. Okay, good. So by introducing the ability to continuously sense internal operations and external market conditions, which is what I just did, and to analyze variations quickly, digital capabilities allow intelligent processes to identify opportunities for improvement. Once an opportunity for improvement is found, other digital technologies such as intelligent tools Advanced collaboration technologies and adaptive robotics uh, execute changes, even relatively com complex ones, quickly. Now, what, what does this mean? Once again, let me show you this. Now, this is one of the beautiful things about being on our platform. You would actually have the opportunity to actually see, you wouldn't just listen to lecture, you would also um, see the tools being used as well, which is very, very, very important, in my opinion. Okay? So, um, oh gosh, please don't turn my computer as fast again. Um, let me quickly open up the browser because I can't seem to close this down. Um, but uh, let me quickly go to Salesforce. Now, if you notice, I am accessing everything online. This is what we call cloud technology. So I'm accessing Google Analytics via cloud. I don't need to download a software. I just need to log in. I'm accessing our customer relationship management system where all our customers are based on cloud. I don't need to get a server somewhere and, put, and, and spend loads of money getting AC and put all our information on data. And if somebody comes and burns the building, it's all over. So you can see that I am, we are moving from the age of limited accessibility to the age of unlimited accessibility. Now, what you need to understand is this. Peter, who was, who, who, whose experience, whose life experience as a project manager or as a business analyst over the years has been built based on limited accessibility. That's Peter. While Joe, who is now in the digital age, is gaining experience based on limited accessibility. So the way they think are totally and utterly different. Um, while Peter, um, while um, um, Peter will be focusing on networks, having a network and having a server, Joe will be focusing on making sure that everything is available on cloud and accessible. So let's look at, for example, do you remember the days of cassettes? So let, let's kind of let, let's let's go back to history. So do you remember the no 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 no? Let, let, let's just turntable turntable album. I'm just going to show you a few things just so that we can understand what's going on here. Do you remember this? Do you all remember this? Do you remember? Yes. This? Okay, uh, you all remember this? And there was a limited yes. yeah. This was the age of limited accessibility. Yeah. Why? Because there's a maximum number of music that can go on there. But as time turns out, we move to cassettes. Uh, if I can get cassettes right. Okay, so we move to cassettes. Cassettes. Okay, so you remember cassettes. What was the maximum number of minutes you could have on that? Mm. I can't forget. 240 minutes was the most I saw. This one is 90. Yeah. Can you see? <laughs> you know? So those were the days of limited accessibility. So yes, things were things were things were um we were using technology, but it was limited technology. Those were the days of limited technology. Okay. Then we moved to what? CD player. At that point, you could have up to 200 songs on there. Now, what you also have to understand is digital transformation is actually making businesses obsolete. Imagine once upon a time, companies created these things. Those companies that did not evolve are dead. I mean, somebody please help me here. What are the brands during the days where you had your say? If you're ever in university, you had a stereo system. Yeah? Hopefully I'll get the old stereo. Yeah, do you all remember this? <laughs> do you all remember this? Yes, Kenwood. 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 Yeah. Okay, good. Can you go out and buy a Kenwood now? No. All right, give me another name. Um... Tony, um, Tony has evolved. Sony has evolved. So the ICC, I never even heard of. JVC, I haven't seen a JVC um, uh, mm -hmm. device in a long time. 
Toshiba. Do you remember Toshiba? Philips. Yeah, okay. Philips. So you can see that as a result of Motorola, well, don't worry, I'm coming to mobile phones very soon. So you can see that as a result of lack of innovation, lack of transforming, these businesses have died. In those days, in, oh, Sanyo, yes, I remember. So in those days, have you noticed that in those days, at least before the business died, it can take 20 years. Now, in these days, the business can die in two years. The business can die in one year. Businesses that have been around for hundreds of years are disappearing overnight. Why? Because they are failing to evolve. Now, we have the CD system, okay? We are still living in the age of limited accessibility. Then all of a sudden, we had the iPod. That was when innovation started. Then, then it was all about storage. So we now started, we were able to store more in a smaller device. That was now when digital technology started to take place. We're now evolving from analog to digital. So we could store 10,000 music on, on the iPod. Do you remember the iPod, right? And then yeah. from the iPod, we now had what we call MP3 player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, then we had what we call MP3 players. But all of a sudden, something happened overnight. You could now no, no longer store music on your phones. Cloud was introduced. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was when the uh, limited access, unlimited accessibility was born. What the cloud, so what businesses the cloud creates? Netflix. My goodness, I'm, in, I'm addicted to Netflix. And I talked about last week how Netflix bankrupted blockbusters. Because blockbusters still kept to the videotapes. They still kept to analog technology, Why Netflix Tapped, didn't just tap into digital, they tapped into unlimited accessibility. So you can watch unlimited, you can, and because you had unlimited internet access and you had wireless technology. Oh, come on. I can't pick up this call, guy. Don't call me, please. please, please, please. Let me, sorry, if I can just tell the guy that I'm on a call. All right. So what actually happened is, uh, what actually happened is, basically they moved to what you call, um, they tapped into unlimited accessibility. So guess what? All you need is a username and password, and you pay five ninety nine a month, and you can watch as many movies as you want on Netflix. You can stream as many movies as you want. Now you could not do this seven years ago. Seven years ago or eight years ago, you could not go on the internet. So you could not go and stream movies because the internet speed wasn't that fast. You didn't have the um, a fiber optics in, that, in those days. So you realize that the business decisions people made were based on limited accessibility. While the business decisions that are made today are based on unlimited accessibility. So the way a project manager of those days would give advice is different from the way a project manager of today would give advice. So that is why companies are looking for digital project managers and digital business analysts or digital professionals, which now brings me back to what I just explained to you over here. So I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that the story I am telling is now beginning to make sense. So if you notice, I sent you over here, I, I sent you this link over here and told you that, look, guys, the age, the digital age that we're living in is a massive market. Not only is it massive, it is what, in, in terms of, um, Let's go to where we saw the size. It has grown. It has grown to 170 billion in just five years, and there are 1.6 million digital jobs created, and there's still a skill shortage. Why? Because not that many people are skilled. And I just showed you just now that. Hold up a second. Bear in mind that these days companies are going down under so quickly. Why? Because digital technology is advancing at an alarming rate. Let me tell you something. This news about Uber being banned from London is bullshit. Yeah, let, me, let's just, let me just tell you what it is. The black cab business almost had a riot last year. And why? Mm. Because the market, because, because Uber, the digitization of the cab industry, the digitization and automation of the cab industry literally wiped out the black cab business. Black mm. cab was not getting there. You know, some guys, I, I mean, you think, I'm, I'm sure you guys will go to stations. And if you in Central mm. London, you see black cab sitting there, mm. waiting to pick people up. All of a sudden, they're sitting there, nobody's being picked up. 
and Black Cap makes around fifty thousand pounds a year. Now their money has dropped to eighteen thousand pounds a year. They can't feed their family. They have to. They have to. They have to put things in place to shut down Uber because literally yeah. they're not making money. So this is a political thing. It is all mm. about oh they didn't meet corporate. But they just found an excuse because digital is putting businesses that have been around for years out of business. NHS has announced to spend 4.6, 4.2 billion. So somebody will say, oh, it's only IT. Well, NHS is not IT. It's healthcare. And they are spending 4.2 billion NHS on digital, on digital transformation. Why? Because if they don't transform, they are dead. Uh, let me come over here and you see it. Uh, NHL Secretary promises 4.2 billion on digital. Uh, launch, uh, review, I mean, launch. So that's that. Uh, um, um, who else? HSBC, I think it was 1 billion or 2 billion. HSBC looks to digital transformation to support 25,000 job cuts. Uh, ah, actually, no, no, I've seen the number. They actually spent 7 point, so since, okay, plunges to, okay, so. Uh, okay, that's, that's the result of their digital transformation, but I know they're spending a lot of money on it. And it goes on and on. Why? Because if you don't do it, you're dead. Let me give you an example with the banking sector, because banking sector is not IT. But guess what? They, they have to literally use digital technology. Why? Because it is the best way to integrate into their customer's lifestyle. And why is that? Because, ladies and gentlemen, when, the, when digital technology did not exist, let me tell you how we socialized. When there was no digital technology, this is how we socialized. We went and we had picnics, and people would meet up. This is how people enjoyed life. I hope it's making sense. When we are at a dinner, this is how people actually have dinners. Okay, dinner, family, sorry. When we are at a dinner, this is how people actually had dinner. They talked. Mm. Today, this is dinner, 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 dinner in the digital age. I'm hoping I'll find a typical example. So even people's lives have transformed. This is dinner in the digital age. Does anybody recognize this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Snapshot and all that. Yeah. People will be at dinner. You will be with friends and everybody's on their phone. Mm. Now, do you remember? Ah, look, look, look. Isn't this? Does anybody recognize this? Please confirm that I'm, I'm the only one. Do you all recognize this? This is how people, this is how people communicate now. Yeah. No formal interaction anymore. Yeah. Even, even a family relationship, husband and wife. Yeah, even husband and wife. Absolutely correct. Even husband and wife. Now, what does this tell you? What does this tell you? Okay, what does this tell you? This tells you, but let me tell you something that's also different. Do you actually know that, yes, you might have found it rude maybe two years ago. But do you know that now you can actually be at a dinner, all of you are your phones, and nobody is offended? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's like this world is crazy. But guess what? Mm -hmm. It is because our lives are integrated into the digital mediums and channels that we use. Make them take your phone, switch it off for three days. Some of you will have a heart attack. Or let your husband or your wife have your phone for one week, you may not have a marriage. Because your entire life is on your phone. Your entire secret is on your phone. Google knows more about you than your spouse, than your family. Why? Because everything you search for is recorded. Your phone has a camera. Every time you are looking at your phone, they are looking at you. Everyone is rushing. I'm not buying the iPhone 8. You have got my fingerprint. Why should you have my facial record, my face as well? Which means that anywhere I go, you can recognize me straight away. Yeah. But that is the world of digital that we now live in. And I hope this is beginning to make sense. So if I continue with what I was saying, we now went. So we now went from the digital. So we now went. We now, um, 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 as a result of it, now, ladies and gentlemen, what happens when you're listening to music? You use Spotify. 
you have access to unlimited music and you can listen to what you want to listen to. When you want to watch a movie, what do you do? You listen to, you go to Netflix. You have access to unlimited movies and you can listen to what you want to watch. Watch. When you need a cab, you know, ah, thank God for the days when you will call a cab and they'll tell you they are busy. These days, just use Uber. Mm. Me, I'm going to, if I was living in London, I will riot too. And I will riot because I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want black cabs. Black cabs are expensive. But Uber is cheap yeah. and it's accessible. And you know what is really cool about Uber? You can literally see where the, you can even tell Uber to go and pick somebody up now. Why, why would people not fight for it? Because it's literally mm. killing the market. So as a yeah. result, um, let me even give an exa another example. Um, um, I asked the bank to increase my overdraft to 25,000 pounds. That's the um, business overdraft. Do you know that they just sent me a letter today approving it? They just sent me a letter today approving it and I applied for this thing two weeks ago. When I use fintech, I get a loan in 10 seconds and it is in my bank account. In, no, no, no. Actually, let me prove it to you. So let me just show you PayPal. I think I've, some of you have been on the call uh, so, so long to actually see this. So on Saturday's call, you'll have seen that. So if I go to PayPal Working Capital, I can actually apply for a loan and I will get the money. Not, a not just a response, so I'll get the money in literally seconds. So PayPal Working Capital. Yeah, there we go. And I only pay it as I make money. If I'm not making money, obviously I have to make money to pay it. And I can get it in 12 seconds. Can you believe that? In exactly 12, no, in 12 minutes, sorry. In 12 minutes, I can apply for this thing and have the money in my account in 12 minutes. While with, with the bank, it is two weeks. So please tell me why the digital transformation will not put businesses that are not digitally transforming out of business? And why would companies not be running Helter Skelter to be totally transformed? Because if they don't, their competitor does it, they lose all their customers to that competitor. Let's think about it. I am not the only one in the market that does what I'm doing. But I am the only mm -hmm. one in the market that provides e-work experience. Everybody trains. Anybody can sit in their bedroom and train. But I am the only one that has digitized and automated the e-work experience platform that enables you to train and gain experience from the convenience of your home anytime, anywhere. Some of you are on this call, and we did it last week, and you are taking a dump. Some of you are on this call, and you are actually in the kitchen. Some of you are driving, and everybody is paying attention. We have digitized. And that is why we can have 49 people on this call right now, while other people are walking towards getting 5, 10 people in the office. So, digital transformation would either give you a competitive advantage, increase your revenue, drive down operational costs, and kill your competitors. Or you'll be killed if you are not doing it. And this is why it is essential for all companies to go through it. So, in carrying on, digital technology drives. What does digital technology drive? Well, it's self-evolution as we are where we are right now. And we are involved, we are now evolving based on real-time data. So what does this mean? Do you know that I can actually find out who is on my website right now? What do I do? I can go to what we call real-time, and I would know exactly who is on my website and what they are doing on my website. So right now, there are seven people on my website. 71% uh, of them are using desktop and 29% are using mobile. I can even dig deeper and find out what kind of mobile phones they are using. I can actually find out where they are coming from. I can go to location. Okay, why, why is not even showing me anything? Okay, right now. Oops, sorry. I don't know why that happened. Let me just um, zoom back in. Right. Let me go back. All right, so I can go to location. Okay, 100% is desktop, that's why. I can go to location, and basically everybody on my website right now in the United Kingdom, I don't have anybody from anywhere in the world. Actually, I have, I have. okay, everybody right now is in the United Kingdom. So if I was going to do a campaign right now, I would do it in the United Kingdom. Where are they coming from? So where are they coming from? Uh, okay, they're coming directly from Google. They, they literally that they actually typed the name, our, browser, our website name directly. And what I can now do with Salesforce automation is that I can actually track where these people are going to. 
So the next future for us right now, if I go to Salesforce, I don't know if you notice what I remember what I said to you before. Everything I am doing, I am doing it without actually downloading anything. I'm just logging in. So I can now come over here. So the next phase for us is for as a business is full automation in real time. So why is that important to me? Why is full automation in real time important to me? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be able to figure out what this person is doing on my website. I want to be able to identify if this person on my website is a potential customer. I want to be able to figure out where the person is going to next and how to get him back onto my website. Isn't that awesome? Now, another mm -hmm. thing that's important with analytics is it gives me insights into my business, the history of my business. I can figure out, okay, based on 2013 to 2017, have I had more people secure a job? And based on the people that are securing jobs, do we have more people who are active on our platform? So based on our transformation strategy, I can tell you that it actually, it is working. So rather than wishing and praying, we don't pray and wish anymore. The data is our oracle. The data is prophecy for us. I hope it's making sense. Somebody calls me, my staff, and say they want a pay rise. Eh, you want a pay rise, Abby? Okay, we will pay you based on how many sales you have made. Okay? So, if Blessing calls me, and if um, she's about calls me and says she wants a pay rise, I will laugh at her. You have only made $4,970. If Fumi says she's leaving the company, I will beg her. Fumi, please, I beg, please don't leave. Now. I beg, please, for the love of God, I'm begging you, please don't leave. Ah, the amount you are making is too much now. Moyo, who just started with us, okay? So, actually, Moyo, is, Moyo who just started with us, she's doing quite as well. So, I can see opportunity with Moyo. I don't know if this is making sense. Mm -hmm. Normally, you have to manually do these things. Now everything is digitized. So now I want you to ask me a question. What industry doesn't need digitization? And this is going to help me see if you understand what I've said. So what industry doesn't need digitization? Please respond, guys. Um. Yeah, I, I believe it's uh, digitization, it's sales driven. Mm -mm. Any business that any business that will have sales. Digitization is not just sales driven. Digitization is performance driven, it's quality driven, it's customer centric, it's growth, it's valuation. Digitization is everything. Basically, without digitization, you don't even have a business. We are living in the digital age. I just showed you a picture of everybody on their mobile phone, right? Mm. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think they have billboard ads on roads? Mm. They have billboard Awareness. The awareness, exposure. But people are driving, right? Mm. Are you going to see the billboard ad and respond? No. No. But if I could get your attention where your eyes is 24-7, where is that? Where is your eyes 24-7? On your phone? Whatever you do. On your On phone? Your, yeah. So businesses must integrate into the customer's lifestyle through the digital medium or channel that they use or platform. So businesses must digitize. So, for example, someone said, I'm thinking child care. Well, the children have parents, right? So if the children have parents, if a business comes up with a solution whereby you can see your child in the child care day center as part of their package, do you think they will not kill all the other industry because all parents want to see their children? The opportunities that digitization brings cuts across any sector. And the moment your sector is digitized to solve any problem, if you have not digitized, you are dead because everybody will go to that competitor. Mm. I'm talking about they can, they can I'm talking see, about you see being, their kids. Yeah, I'm talking about you being able to see your own child. You, you, you take your phone. Your child care. Would you like an ability to be able to log in, have a password specific for you to keep your eye on your child? I will even, if, it was, if they create it for school, me, I will do it. 
I want to see what is happening in, in, in school. I, when I'm walking, I'll just mm -hmm. put it on and leave it on there. I'll be watching over my mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. I hope it's making sense. So, dissertation yeah. cuts across all sectors. Now, if that is now what is driving investment and projects, like I showed you earlier, that they are spending billions on digitalization in the UK alone, not worldwide, I'm not talking about worldwide, then that means that they will have to create projects. Am I right? They will have to have a portfolio yeah. of projects. And those portfolio mm -hmm. projects are digitally focused. They're to achieve a digital initiative. So what does that mean? It means they're going to have to look for people with digital skills. Am I right? Yeah, right. And that is why today is all about digital project manager, digital business analyst. And we can quickly confirm that here. So if I go to jobserve.com and I go to, um, and I type in digital project manager and I type contract, you will see tons of jobs. At least 1,300 something jobs, 500 a day, 300 a day, 450 a day. I type in digital business analyst. In fact, there's, you go and do, spend your time and go and check. You realize that there's no job that you will see now as a project manager, as a business analyst that doesn't have digital to do with it. Okay? Even if you yeah. just put this business analyst on its own, you will see that either digital is in the title or it is in the content. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> AWS. Does anybody know what AWS is? Uh, uh, Amazon Web Services. Yeah. So that's digital. This is a digital job straight away. That's a digital job straight away. Let's carry on. <laughs> Retail, EPOS, that's digital straight away. Business analyst, financial services. Let's see. <laughs> Looking purely technical. Uh, from a purely technical business, <laughs> digital straight away. The business analyst, data. You cannot find a BA role or a PM role that they are just looking for a PM or BA without specialist skills in digital. Not possible. So I always tell people, yeah, go and meet that Tom, uh, PM, um, um, Tom who is going to teach you PM and BA from the convenience of his house. If you don't have any digital skills, yes, it's cheaper. But guess what? You're not getting a job. Because you have to demonstrate the experience. So now... It now brings us to carrying on with, okay, it looks as if I haven't got any choice. I have to master digital. So what does digital technology drive? It drives rapid iteration. The ability for us to fail very fast, experiment, and come up with new products very quickly. Roll things out. And that is why companies can launch products so quickly and other companies that are not evolving are dying. You can create products. I do products that cost me one. This was a case study I love so much. I have to put it here. This is where rapid integration comes into play. Audi automated system, in, uh, automated system intelligently um, adapted to customer consumer response using rapid data analysis. That's machine learning. Some of you will have heard about machine learning. To continually refine the questions it asks customers based on their demographic profile. So basically, when it asks a question, it will learn from the answer and ask another question. And it was able to do that in real time. And based on the question, they were able to create a prototype. Based on questions, create, do prototyping to actually launch a product that customers actually wanted, which thereby enabled them to um, sell out in products because they already found out what customers wanted. So the old days of a BA where he would sit in a room and ask people what, um, and gather requirements, and build things from a functionality point of view are gone. Now we use data, we are using data to build specification. So that is not a joke at all. And in that, in that um, um, what do you call it? We have what we call process combination, the ability to be able to combine robots and human beings together. People are now working with robots. Have an intelligent warehouse. Amazon is very good with that, whereby basically they have a warehouse where it's only robots that are there. There are no people there at all. So robotics are taking jobs. Let me, let me quickly show you something. I just want to show you something. Because there are things you should know. So um, will, will, will robots take my job? Uh, let me quickly send this to you as well. BBC. 
me, I love the UK. You know, one of the reasons I love the UK is that they're always forward thinking. They always, because at the end of the day, if your economy is not forward thinking, you cannot survive. So there you go. So now, will robots take your job? Can somebody tell me what their profession is, please? Let's let's take this test. What is your profession? What is your current profession? Let's find out if if bots will take your job. And this is we're talking about one year, two years, three years now. We're not talking about ten years. Now. Project engineer. Uh, sorry. Project engineer. Okay, so I'm just gonna type in engineer. Okay, so is it mechanical product or process design engineer? Which one? Mechanical. Okay, mechanical. So mechanical engineer. So will robots take your job? Uh. What did he say? It's quite unlikely that robots will take your job. So, thirteen percent. So, you are safe, but you would, but but you will have to digit, you will have to be up to date with digital technology because you'll be working with robots, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Let's make this as interactive as possible. Anybody else? Document controller, uh, beauty consultant. Okay. So, document. Okay. Let me just type in controller. What's what's the general job for this? Um, okay, let me try try credit control. Let's use jobs that um, okay, it's too close to call. Fifty one percent chance that your job can be taken away by a robot if you're a credit controller. Let me let's look at someone typing beauty beautician. It's not very likely thirty seven percent because it's, it still has that human connection. Okay, so there's unlikely that your job will be taken away by um, by uh, a bot. But let's see if anybody else has typed anything. IT engineer, okay. We'll type in IT engineer. Okay, good. We've seen that's the first one we've seen. Let's see. Oh, too close to call. 58% chance that your job will be taken away by robots. So which means that it, most of every... So basically, you have to digitize your skills. It's just that simple. You just need to digitize your skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what else is there? Um, teacher, higher education, teaching, professional. Oh, there's so many ones. Let me let me just click on higher education and see. But I doubt it. Yeah, very unlikely. But you always need teachers, okay? Mm. Primary school teacher. I think is likely. Oh, no, very unlikely. Okay, that's good. But let's look at other jobs. Let's look at other jobs now. So let's look at, for example, sales. If you're in sales. 97% chance your job will be taken by a robot. Let's look at sales again. Business sales executive. That is unlikely, but you need that or 39%. Okay, so that means that you have to digitize yourself as well. Let's look at customer service. Now, I mean, even me, I've driven down my customer service when we call it. So I'll say 91% <laughs> chance that customer service job will be taken away. Okay. Chef, I doubt it. A chef will always have a job. People like, you know, things that have that, that maintain that human connection. Yeah. Oh, what? 37%, which means that even chef has to, or to, has to, <laughs> I think it, the thing about it is that, oh, yes, that's, in, that's interesting. Mental, because that, it's in mental, it's human. That, that human connection is still needed. No, it doesn't have, doesn't have anything on mental. Okay. Accounting. Oh, this one is shocking. This one is shocking. This one is shocking. I saw it the other day and I was shocked. 95% chance that accountant's job, a chartered and certified accountant's job will be taken away by robots. Mm -hmm. So come on, guys. Let's be realistic with ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves if we are saying that I don't want to learn digital. We are deceiving ourselves. Why are we deceiving ourselves? Somebody said butch. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I, saw I saw that. I saw that. 55% chance. <laughs> yeah? Lawyer. I think I saw lawyer, right? Okay, it's not coming up. Uh, let's type in project manager. IT project manager. 22%, which means that you have to actually build your digital skills. Let's type in business analyst. IT business analyst. 
one percent chance that your job will be taken. Why? Because obviously you're already you're already digital anyway. So as a result of it, your job will always be there. So we haven't got a choice, guys. So I'm going to do one last one, Taylor. Eighty-four percent chance, guys. So I'll let you try it out yourselves, <laughs> and I'll move on to the presentation. But at least we are aware of what's going on right now. Okay, so those are the things like edge centricity, localized responsibility. You know, when you do the training properly, I will explain these things to you properly. Okay, but for now, let's carry on because I don't want to waste too much time on here. So, what? Why is it important that businesses have a digital strategy? I think it's clearly obvious. A digital strategy is a plan for maximizing the business benefits of data assets and technology focused initiatives. In simple English, a digital strategy plan is for maximizing how we will make money using the data we have in our house and also the technology available to us so that we can enhance every area of the business. A successful digital strategy requires a cross-functional team with executive leadership, marketing, and one second, I don't know why people call me on this house phone. Even I don't know the house phone number. All right. So a successful digital strategy requires a cross-functional team with executive leadership, marketing, and information technology members. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it's no longer just IT. It's, business, it's the business, is strategy, is leadership, is marketing, everything coming together. To summarize, digital technology is seen as a successful business strategy enabler. So any business in this world that has a strategy must consider using digital technology to enhance their strategy. So business strategy as a whole. Is the manage is the is um, business uh, business or strategic management is the art or science or craft of formulating, implementing, and evaluating cross-functional decisions that will enable an organization to achieve its short, mid-term, and long-term objectives. So basically, what are, what do we what is this, what do we need to do to grow and make money? Short-term, mid-term, and long-term, and that is where because digital technology is literally because we live in the digital age, we must see how digital technology can help us achieve this objective. So in the digital age, because the average Joe Back is accessing the internet via his mobile phone, your strategy must evolve around having a mobile first strategy, focusing on improving customer experience, focusing on speed, usability, user experience, delivery, and accessibility. Why? How many of you here have been on websites on your phone and it doesn't load within three seconds? Do you leave? Yes. How many of you here have, you don't leave, you wait? You try again. Okay. Well, how many times do you try? You're very patient. The average, the average Joe these days can't wait. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then speed. You want speed. You want the experience. If, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't display properly on mobile, you leave. Accessibility. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to access it anywhere and delivery. These are important. Why are they very important? Well, because as a business, you have to go through what we call digital business transformation in order for you to stay competitive. What is the de definition of digital business transformation? Digital business transformation is a profound and accelerating transformation of business activities. I will explain it in English. Digital, digital business transformation is the... I'm trying to find the right word for profound and accelerating. Digital, dig digital business transformation is basically you sitting down and looking at a ways to enhance every activity in your business using digital technology. You're not just looking at your business activities, you're looking at your processes, your competencies, your model to fully leverage the changes and opportunities of digital technology. So, for example, this facial recognition thing, that is what you will call um, um, leverage the changes of opportunities of digital technology. Now, banks will now start integrating the facial recognition for you to log into your account. Instead of you entering your PIN or using your um, um, fingerprint, you will now use facial recognition. Now they'll have to spend millions of pounds to set that project up and roll it all around. Just like they did for fingerprint. Most of you use your fingerprint to log into your bank account. But before, you used to use Pin Sentry. Do you remember Pin Sentry? And I'm sure you still use Pin Sentry in some cases. But these days, you don't need Pin Sentry to do online banking again. Just use your fingerprint and you are in. That is leveraging the changes and opportunities of digital technologies and their impacts across society in a strategic and prioritized way 
in order to gain a competitive advantage and stay relevant in today and tomorrow's digital age through improved, optimized customer retention, customer acquisition, and return on investment. If HSBC call me today, I'll tell them to bugger off. I love Barclays. Everything, look, I, I, I can't remember the last time I went into a bank. Unless there's something wrong. Everything is done over my phone. My business manager called me the other day. Um, um, Barclays business manager. Said, oh, she's just wondering how things are going, uh, if we can have a meeting. I said, why? Why? Why do we have, have a meeting? Everything is good. What are you going to tell? So I just want to, uh, you know, keep a relationship. I said, I have, I have a relationship with my app. <laughs> Everything is okay on my app. I don't need to meet you. What are we going to talk about? You're, you're wasting my time. <laughs> and why did she want to meet me? Because all my payments are taken by PayPal. I don't use their payment gateway. It's too slow. It takes, it takes three days for the money to enter my account. With PayPal, the money enters my account instantly. I am using fintech technology. I am using companies that are evolving with technology because it, is, it, 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 it helps my business. While you, the bank, that will use POS, you will take your percentage from POS, take three days to put it into my bank account, to keep 30% um, of it or keep um, um, this in case, no, come on, man, please get out, get out of my face. I'm perfectly happy with the service I use and you want to see me for what? And you can see that banks are losing market share because they are not evolving as quickly as other forward-thinking companies are. Digital business transformation. We focus on the development of new competencies revolving around the capacities to be more agile, people-oriented, innovative, customer-centric, aligned, and efficient with present and future shifts in mind. Now, what are we saying here? What we're saying here is that, you know this agile certification you have been doing? It is now more relevant than ever. But on top of it, we still want you to be people-oriented, customer-centric. We want you to be innovative, understand the new technologies that are out there. And we want you to understand the present state and future state and how we are shifting, in, in, in how the mind is shifting in terms of evolving and using that technology. The digital transformation is a journey with multiple connected intermediary goals. Look at what I just did earlier. I logged into Google Analytics. I logged into Salesforce. I can log into many, many platforms that are integrated into our system just to come up with an idea of what's going on. In the end, striving towards continuous optimization across processes, divisions, and business ecosystems of a hyper-connected age where building the right bridges and functions of that journey is key to succeed or key to success. So digital business transformation and hyper-connectedness. Hyper so basically, this is where everything is interconnected. No, I talked about it earlier. These days, um, the future is Internet of Things. Open your fridge. If there is a milk missing, it will, it will order the milk from Amazon or from Sainsbury straight away. Two days later, the milk, you get a delivery. Everything is interconnected. Customer and customer experience, purpose and end goals, partners, stakeholders, the last mile of Processes and disruptions sit and occur at these edges and are key for digital transformation. The end goals of the business, customers and stakeholders driven by the agenda, the digital transformation agenda. So my dear, it cuts across every area of the business. So what are digital business transformation areas? We look at the business activities, marketing, operation, human resource, administration, customer sales. So whatever department you are in is going through digital transformation. We look at the business process. We look at the business model as a whole. We look at the business ecosystem, their network of partners, stakeholders. We look at the business assets. And what is causing disruption? We call it disruptive technology. Now, what is disruptive technology? The fact that once upon a time, you walk down this road to rent a movie. All of a sudden, you do it online. That's disruptive technology. The fact that you will call a cab and then they will come and pick you up, and you have to call a cab number. Now you do it over your phone. That's disruptive technology. The fact that you go on Google, and you can search for just about anything. In fact, Google is now your best friend. Instead of you going to a library, have you noticed? When was the last time you went to a library? And when was the last time you went to Google? That's disruptive technology. Customer behavior... And demands. The more people are becoming more educated about using digital technology, the more they demand and decide how the system is being used. And then ecosystem induced. 
with interconnectivity, you realize that you actually have, in order for you to even work with certain partners, you have to plug into their systems through APIs. So, we as a company, we had to go through digital transformation. It was important because we realized that we have a London enough office in London. I pay three thousand pounds a month for my rent in London. I pay two thousand pounds a month for my rent in Manchester. We wanted to open another office in in, in Glasgow, and another one, and I, in Birmingham. In my, uh, I just thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. And then because it's not just the rent; it's the staff that you hire as well. What if we could digitize everything and automate everything? And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we decided to do. And even us, a training company, is going through digital transformation. So the DBT digital, digital organization, we will be focused on customer experience irrespective of channel. In fact, we will take on an integrated multi-channel view with one centralized data center, with data and business intelligence being the driving force of decision making from top to down. We will focus on having a digital culture. That is why you saw me log in and showed you data. You, I, we have a centralized customer data center now. We can, all our channels are integrated into it and we're very much customer centric. We focus on having a digital culture in this company. We will do what we do. What, sorry, what do we obsess about? In order, so you have to use digital transformation to achieve your success. So for us, we are obsessed with success stories. And I'm sure you, you basically, the moment you joined us, you realize that we're all obsessed about success stories. We have to throw out 30 AD. We are obsessed with the best customer experience at all touch points. We want you to be inspired by us. Because if you are inspired by us, your life will change. We want to deliver work experience anywhere, everywhere. Now, if this was Microsoft, if this was NHS, if this was the Barclays, they will have their own objective for digital transformation and what they obsess about. They will have what success looks like. For us, it is digital products and services so good, prospective candidates and existing candidates looking to move up the career ladder, change career, or secure high-paying roles prefer to use us compared to anybody else. I created a DX and DM group. I am not joking. I, 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 I'm going to shock you here. Let me just open up my emails. Uh, we're partners with the Digital Marketing Institute. Uh, it is them I'm doing my master's with. That was why I was able to pause it. Uh, I'm accredited by them. I'm, we're an accredited trainer. And then, um, and then the company and myself are accredited by them. Okay, so that is good news for you guys. And that's why we can... Um, uh, master... Oh, gosh. Let me just look for our job. What people are applying for each other. One second. Okay. Let me be in mind. Oh. How to find. Okay. Let me just type the MI. Okay. Nast. 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 Jack. So what am I looking for? No, she sent me an invoice, didn't she? Uh, oh, please. This is what I don't like about my emails. That's not that one. I paid for that one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just bear with me, guys. I'll find it. Uh -huh. So. They sent me an invoice for 50 pre-purchased seats at a 20% discount. Yeah? Now, let me, let me show you this. I'm just going to go to um, uh, DMI. So, Digital Marketing Institute. I'm just going to show you something, just so you can see. Uh, let, me try, let me try this. Okay. How much is it? They charged 1560 for it. Um, they gave me a 20% discount. I brought it down to £660. Don't ask me how I do it. Uh, but um, um, I brought it down to £660. So all of our candidates can be accredited. What, what you will find here is that we will always make things cheaper for you. Um, and we'll try and bring it as down because we have the numbers. So I um, told her that, look, we will do 50. She asked me how many people do I want to pre-purchase. I said I'll do 50. 
okay so let me just do 50 and i'm perfectly fine with that now check this out i put it on the on the group and i created the group i said guys i've got the discount too ladies and gentlemen we only wanted 50 in this group we now have 786 people that's ridiculous i can't even tell dmi that hey this is what is happening and why is that possible it's, it's possible because we have what we call a mobile first strategy we don't need to advertise we have used instant messaging mobile first strategy instant messaging to create groups and easily create awareness and exposure for things so for a business to get 786 interested parties you have to spend at least 20 to 30 thousand pounds we we didn't spend anything so digital transformation is not a joke i always tell people this now coming back over here we want to build digital products and services so good prospective candidates and existing candidates looking to move on the career ladder, change careers, or secure high-paying roles prefer to use us. So what does that now mean? It now means that for our business, we need to have a centralized customer data center, integrate it into all of our channels with um, multi-channel integration in order for us to have better client retention, better client acquisition, better marketing return on investment by being customer-centric. I'm telling you right now, this is what you need to learn. We're going to train you on all of these areas, but right now, I just want you to understand. So what, what do I mean by this? Well, all my sales, all my marketing, all my support, all my social media, everything, I want it integrated so that marketing knows what is happening in sales. Sales knows what's happening in service delivery. If somebody calls marketing, we have all the information from one department because we have a centralized customer data center. Now, when like, you call and we know who you are, we know what you paid for. We know what you are interested in. You will, you, would, you will like us better because you will think we are professional. But you know when you will love us the more? When we have so much data about you that, and we have so much data about the system that when you log into the eWork Experience platform the next time, you will say, because you watched this video and because you've attended this training session, um, Peter, who got a job last week, attended this training session and this video, and based on his personality test, it matches your personality test, can we recommend that you contact Peter so that Peter can mentor you and also you listen to all the videos that Peter listened to. Now, I want you to tell me, if we had that, how would you feel? Let's have a discussion about if we had that, how would you feel, guys? So does anybody else want to talk? Because we only have one person who have unmuted. Yeah, I'll be overwhelmed anyway. Yeah, you'll be overwhelmed. But apart from being overwhelmed, how would you feel? Now, somebody said, you don't always get back to customers on time. Yes, absolutely. Do you know why? Because we haven't achieved 100% of our digital transformation initiative. We are still relying on human beings. This is why we are now moving to automation, whereby people who haven't been called but have been booked to call, you will be called automatically. Because we still have to manually go and look at people who have not been called. And by the way, personally, I, I spent all day calling everybody yesterday. You guys don't pick up your phone call. You can't blame yourself. <laughs> okay, but my staff has been calling a lot of you, but we are trying to automate. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. So, um, um, ERP is digitized. There's no line between ERP and digital. ERP is digitized. Everything, everything is about digitizing, whatever it is. CRM digitized, ERP digitized. Okay, you will feel more confident in my anniversary. Yeah, exactly. So, that is why it is all about customer centricity. All about being customer centric. And ladies and gentlemen, that we need machine learning and data analytics and predictive analysis to do that. And that is not a joke. Now you can understand why companies are investing heavily in it. So, what is the DBT's digital culture? Our commercial goals are aligned with our digital strategy. Customer centric and customer experience and user experience are the heart of what we do. Transparent. I'm sure that you guys can notice that we're pretty transparent here. Collaborative, collaborative across functional teams using technology. Environment, interconnected, agile, and cross-functional. Empowered. By the way, just to let you know, everything I'm putting here is the same thing that Microsoft will have, is the same thing that Shell will have, is the same thing NHS will have. Empowered, the, the right digital skills and expertise, um, uh, uh, with expertise. Data-driven, data inf informs and drives decision-making. Passionate about all things digital. Continuous innovation of the eWork Experience platform. Agile. Learn through failing, but failing forward through constant feedback, embracing changes, speed, uh, uh, release in iterations. So, 
uh, I'll come back to this later. So right now, where are companies? We as a business, we are now in digital transformer. We're now in managed. While other businesses might be in resistance, explorer, player, or disruptor. But where do you want to be? You want to be, eventually be in disruptor. I think we're between transformer and disruptor because we're already disrupting the market through e-work experience platform. Okay. However, a lot of businesses like NHS, and NHS is still in Digital Explorer. So that's why they got hacked last year. Yeah. The banks are now players. The banks are now digital players. Okay. So there is still room for growth. And that is where the opportunities are, as you can see. Do you learn, as someone has just asked one of the best questions ever, do you learn all this in the eWork Experience platform? Let me now show you what I've been doing. Have you noticed that the, everything I'm teaching you, I'm even relating it to eWork Experience? So it's as if you are learning on the job because when you go for a job interview, you're going to say you work for Digital Bananas Technology. And what project did you work on? You worked on the eWork Experience platform. So what was the, what was the um, objective of the, of the eWork Experience platform in terms of the digital initiative? So I'm explaining it to you. So you're seeing it for real. So the answer to that is yes, you learn all this. And you also don't just learn it. You get involved in the project itself. Mm. And that is where the experience comes from. What is important to us is the same thing as important to all digital transformation companies as created by Capgemini. Customer experience. We need to understand the customer. So we need analytics-based segmentation. We need top-line growth in terms of digitally enhanced selling, predictive marketing. We need, customer to, we need to understand our customer touch points and digitize them. Our processes. We need to automate our processes. We need to improve our processes. We need our staff to be able to work anywhere, anytime. We need community knowledge sharing. This is why you have Basecamp. This is why you have Jira. This is why you have Riva. Don't worry. When you join us, you will use these systems. We need to improve our business model and operate on a global scale. Then we ask ourselves, what are the digital capabilities available for us to achieve this? So digital transformation is first and foremost a business transformation. It's just that we live in the digital age. That is why it is called digital business transformation. So digitalization can extend the reach of organizations, improve management decisions, and speed the development of new products and services. At the same time, the, ex the, um, the excessively rapid adoption of technologies can disrupt traditional business models. And that is why traditional ways of doing things are dying. Organizations need to be carefully, need to carefully tread the path towards digital transformation with concrete strategy to harness its strengths and migrate its challenges. And that's by Cap Gemini Consulting. Let me actually now come here and show you companies that have been destroyed by destructive technology. So if I'm not doing it, my competitor is doing it, and I'll be out of business. Okay? So let's come over here. Blockbusters. You're, do you remember Blockbusters? Yeah. Does anybody know any Blockbusters around the corner that is still open? They no, feel too involved. Somebody will say, but why? But Blockbusters, what do they have to do with digital technology? Well, because they failed to realize it, they died. Netflix came and destroyed the market for them. Nokia. Do you remember, all of, do you, all of you remember Nokia? Do you remember the Nokia uh, 5210 or whatever it was? The snake phones. The snake on your phone. There is no Nokia again. No. Nokia is dead. Kodak. Remember Kodak? I can carry on. There's so many companies. Xerox. Do you remember Xerox, the printing company? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Guys, we can go on and on and on. There are so many companies that no longer exist today. HMV. HMV is dying very soon. Does anybody remember Play.com? Play.com, they used to sell CDs. Well, nobody's buying CDs again now. Amazon is destroying businesses as well. So Kodak, Polaroid, Blockbusters, these are big companies that went dead. 
you can't even, these are big ones because they're so big we know about them not, not to talk of the small ones that are just out of business for good 11 companies that are struggling with disruptive technologies let's see Nokia, Microsoft, okay, but the Microsoft has evolved. B and Q, yes, I was aware of that as well. Who that blockbuster? In fact, some of these with Cisco, no. Some of the companies have evolved now. Some companies have evolved. Some companies did. Some companies evolved and didn't die. So that is good. All right. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we are. This is where we are. So it's 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 there. It's in your face. It's in your face. You now know that whether you like it or not, you must. Why? Because every business now knows that if you digitally optimize your business, your revenue will grow, your profitability will grow, your market valuation will grow. Do you want me to prove it to you? I'll prove it to you. So I've been using, I use PayPal. I don't use any other thing in, in my business. I use PayPal. So I'm going to log in. Now, I'm going to go to the ports. No, actually, it's not the ports I need. The actual is the ports. I'm going to go to insights. Data is powerful, now, honestly. Just wait for this to load. Now, that someone said, uh, yes, absolutely, Justin. One thing that you will realize is that a lot of companies, you see things that you don't see it, you're not seeing it. So because you're not seeing it, uh, it it's happening. Coca-Cola is, you see, the thing is, you, disruptive technology hasn't got to do with just the product. It has to do with processes. They'll have automated processes. They'll have done a lot of things. They have uh, supply chain. They'll have done a lot of things, you know. So let me look at it. So for example, our sales has gone up by 29% from one year ago. From one year ago. If I go by, um, if I go by uh, year, you will see that in 2017 this year, our sales has gone up by 17%. And in the last three months, it has gone up because obviously we started our tra we started our digital transformation in January. So it will be slow. But as digital transformation is kicking in, our sales is now increasing to 35%. And our number of transactions has increased by 53%. And guess what? Our average order value is has reduced by 12%. So we're charging less. Because last year we were charging seven um, um we were charging what um what we, we were charging 760 pounds. This year we give you a discounted offer of 695, which you have to pay by I think you guys have to pay by Monday. And if you don't pay by Monday, then it goes back to 760. So what we've realized that um so it goes back to 760 before the end of um October. So before the end of September, so by the 30th of September, then you are paying 760. Then in, in October, if you're not coming on board in October, and you want to start in October, you will pay 810. Or if you're starting in November, you will pay 1790. So what we have realized is that majority of people are grabbing the 695 offer. So by grabbing the 695 offer, our average order value has dropped to 12%. Then we've also introduced other products that we upsell, like 299 for um, um, GDPR, 149 for um, big data. And as a result of it, our number of transactions has grown. So what has it actually, what has digital transformation helped us to do as a business? Digital transformation as a business has literally increased our revenue generation efficiency. It's enabled us to be more profitable and has increased our market valuation. There is no way you will go to any investor and say, oh, our sales has increased by 35% in the last three months. And if we compare it in a year, it has actually increased overall by 17%. So if I now look at my sales for 2016, yeah, I made £704,000 last year. And guess what? I am in September and I've already made um, £609,000. And roughly, we're gonna, we, I think we're in around £80,000 a month. So if we, let's even say that I make it 70000 So 70000 times... Um, um, actually, no, September is not over yet. So September, October, November, September, October, November, December times four, that is 265,000 plus 608, 
800. We might be close to hitting, um, we'll be close to um, okay. 874,000. So we are going to be more profitable this year than last, than last year as a result of our digital transformation strategy. Please, ladies and gentlemen, tell me that that is not solid. And that's why I told you that over here, the beautiful thing is that because this is where the benefit is for you. We use what we are teaching you to build our system. Then we open it up for you to learn on the job. So you're actually learning and experiencing it for real. So if your experience on the platform is getting better, you are learning why it is getting better, and you're gaining the experience of why it's getting better, and you're even using that for your reference, which is pretty awesome. And I hope you understand how our business model now works. Now, that said, what does that tell us? It tells us that actually what is important in digital transformation is customer experience, people and organization, and operations. Now, I want you to understand something here. Have you noticed that in my whole conversation, I have not written one line of code? In my whole conversation with you, I have not told you that you need to install one software or the other. Digital is not about mastering IT. Digital is about learning how to use IT to enhance the business. So you must be more business savvy and understand digital technology. So no, you don't have to be an IT expert. Customer experience. You must understand that gaining customer insights is critical. Improving the experience design is critical and engaging the customer is critical. Using the right digital enablers, using analytics and data science, and using emerging technologies. Your people and organization, you must find a way to make sure that your, the people in the house have the right digital skills. Digital worker enablement for them to work anywhere, anytime, and maintain a digital culture. So what are the digital capabilities that will help us do that? Our operations, our product and service innovation, connected operation systems, and process automation. What digital technology can help us achieve that? And by doing that, you will see that when it comes to marketing management, it's all about automation, automation, automation. We're transforming marketing, we're transforming sales, we're transforming commerce as a whole. And that now brings us to one important thing in digital transformation. So what are you looking at? You're looking at digital fulfillment, distributed and marketing sales, product and service innovation, customer experience, enhanced corporate control, risk optimization. I am going to pause here, and I'm going to pause there for one reason, because I'm getting quite in-depth, and unless I explain certain things to you, you are going to get confused. So just gain, what I want is a clear understanding of digital transformation, okay? But one thing that is important to us is in digital transformation, we don't build software anymore. We buy and integrate. We don't build three months, six months later or two years later, check. We make mistakes and move forward. Rapid test and learn. And we connect to other softwares through APIs. All these things I will explain to you very soon. So don't worry. All I'm just trying to tell you is that, guys, it's no longer about having an IT company. It's about connecting other systems to your system. So it's like this. You move into a new house. You want music. You go and find the best um, um, music system for your house. You, if you, you realize that you have um, wireless technology in your house, so your house has wireless. So you're not going to go and buy a system which you have to uh, plug all the speakers. You go and buy Sonus. Are you a Sonus expert? No. You just know what you need, and you know the technology you need to meet your need. You just moved into your house, and you have smart metering. All you need to do is connect it to your phone so you can know how much you are spending on electricity. Do you need to be a smart meter expert? No. You just need to know the use of that smart meter and how it will help you achieve your goal. I don't know if you're following what I'm saying here. Now, let me come back to something else that will help you. You just realized that actually you can buy a television that connects you to the internet so that you can actually watch YouTube, watch Netflix, and you have a choice of what TV to buy because you have internet at home. You have a choice of what TV to buy. You can buy a TV, a, a TV that is not smart, or you can buy a smart TV. What TV would you buy? You will buy a smart TV, right? Because it gives you, because you already have the capability, the digital capability. You have the digital capability. So you can enjoy, you can be connected. Do you need to be a smart TV expert? No. You just need to know what you need to achieve your goal and go and get it. And that's why, as a digital transformation expert, you are not building, you are buying. You don't have to get it right. You just need to go through a repetitive process, learn, improve, and deliver on an incremental basis. And instead of you 
having to buy different softwares, why don't you just connect all the softwares together? So what does that mean? Let me prove that to you. Now, as of last year, we used a number of tools. We used Basecamp. We used Jira. We used Jira. We used, um, we just started using Riva. Okay, we use GoToWebinar. We, we actually identified the tools that we need in order for us to digitize our service. Then we then have what we call the eWork Experience Platform. I want to show you what, what the proof of what I've just done here. Now, as a business, we, in, 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 as a business, my God, you will have to go and download, you will have to go and log in to GoToWebinar. Then you have to go and log into Basecamp. Then you have to go and log into this and log into that and log into that just to be on our system. Now, all you need to do is click on meetings. We, have, we didn't buy, you see, imagine we had to build our own meeting. Imagine we had to build our own base camp. We had, to, we had to build all these things. Do you know how expensive it is? Do you know when we will finish the system? Maybe in three years' time. And by then, competitors will have advanced. But they have open APIs. GoToWebinar allows us to connect to their system. So I can click on this meeting and just register for this meeting. And I'm registered on GoToWebinar straight away. Fully integrated into the eWork Experience platform. You no longer need to go elsewhere. I want to join a project. Oh, go and log into Basecamp. Send an email, request to add a project. No, 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 none of that anymore. Go to our list of projects, select a project, join that project, and Basecamp will create you an account automatically. So I can leave a project or I can join a project all on our eWork Experience platform. Oh, I can't communicate with people on the platform. Oh, don't worry. Once you join a project, you'll get an invitation from Riva, which enables you to actually now start communicating with everybody on the platform. So I can now go to the digital business strategy team and I can start communicating with them. I can go to digital academy team, I can start communicating with them. I can go to Salesforce team, I can start communicating with them. I can go to GDPR team, I can start communicating with them. I want to learn big data. I can go to the I can join the big data project and start communicating with them. 315 people in big data. And they are communicating every day, as early as today. I don't know if you're following me. Yeah, I asked a question. What's uh, API? API is application programming interface. In simple English, it enables you to connect into another company. It enables your company, to be, your product, to be able to speak to another product and merge that product together, just like we have done. So this is our product, eWork Experience. We now merge this product. So uh, this, this project, this is Basecamp. So I am app is on Basecamp. So I can join this project right now. Click on Join. And by joining this project right now, I will now be automatically added to Riva. We didn't build Riva. Riva is a separate third-party software which we use API to integrate into it. Now I will be on IM Messenger. I will get the email. Oh, look, 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 look. I, I joined a IM. Automatically, I can start communicating. Hello, guys. I'm going to go to Basecamp. I joined IM on Basecamp, which means that there will be IM here. So jump to project or team, IM. Do you see I am? Okay, what's the name of the project? Sir? It's called what? D X I M R. P J D X I M R. Well, I'll, I'll just say P J. Uh, my my memory is not that sharp. D X dash I M. D so P J D X dash. Oh. Am I in the right account? Oh no, I'm not. Yeah, yes. No, I'm not in the right account. I'm not. Okay, I am. I am. Hey, did you see it? I can't see it. Yeah, under the. Okay, no. No, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm not logged into the correct account. I'm not logged in. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm logged in under. I'm logged in under a different account. So I have to log into. I have to log into my other base camp to see it. 
So I'm logged in under I'm logged in under um update details. I'm logged in under KG at career size of TV and this account is team at career size of TV. Let me confirm that. Yeah, this no it is it's KG at career size of TV. No, oh, it's called it's KG at digital bananas the code UK. So that's why that's why I can see it. So um um but yeah, so it's the wrong account. So I, I don't have login details for this, unfortunately. But basically, everything is integrated, all right, which is really, really cool. So our eWork Experience platform, which has all the videos, all the training materials, has now been integrated with the projects. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what digital transformation is all about. Why? Because it, it's basically giving, it's making your life easier. It's making your life easier. It's making worker enablement possible anywhere, anytime. And that is why we believe that digital transformation will build customer-centric capabilities. Basically, it helps us to build customer-centric capabilities, drive a customer vision, manage deployment, be agile to market changes, and establish an orchestrated platform. Now, this, I'm going to stop here. Why? Because this is now hardcore work in terms of creating the vision and opportunities of the company, understanding what your digital product services are, uh, doing customer, this is hardcore training. This will take at least two days for me to do that. And then helping you to create digital strategy and stuff like that, that is long. So let's just stop for now, okay? Uh, but from there, can you say that you understand digital transformation now? At least, can you say that you understand digital transformation? Come on, guys, let me know. Yes, I know that you, yes. Okay, good. So um, anybody out there, uh, wants to have a chat. I will teach this in greater detail. Please don't worry about it. But today, I just want to get into the main thing was, do you understand digital transformation? If you understand digital transformation, that is what is important. Now, I would like to take questions. If you have a question, um, just type, you want to ask a question, I will mute you, and then you can ask me a question, okay? So, especially, uh, good. so, KG, I see there are the same people in various project groups. Is it wise to do? Oh, yeah, listen, you have to join multiple projects. Because when you go for job interview, they're going to ask you a question. Um, have you been a part? Have you been Have you been involved in multiple projects? And your answer has to be yes, so, you know, because, and that's why we allow you to join more than one project. But start with one project at first. Okay? So, I'm reading the questions. I'm reading, the, reading both chats to see if you have any questions. If you don't have any questions, then Ida tell me that KG, let's take, because I believe that your brain is probably fried. So he said, KG, let's take a 20 minutes break so that you are, we are back at, maybe a 20 minutes or 30 minutes break. So we can be back at one, uh, 12, 30, uh, sorry, one thirty, and then we'll carry on to the end of the day. Okay, so we'll take a, a break. If you're happy to take a break, okay, break, because the brain, will, I, I believe the brain will be fried. All right, so let us take a break and be back at exactly, one um 30 and then we will now break in you know, i will now explain to you what project management and business analysis is all about and you will now be able to cover which one you want to specialize in and then your training will start next week now even though you know what you want to specialize in we will still train you in both project management and business analysis now a lot of you took your test last week so you have an idea i explained it to you all so today what i'll be doing is i'll be explaining to you what project management is and i'll be explaining to you what business analysis is and then you can now understand how it plays in digital, um, um, how it plays in digital uh, transformation. Okay. Sorry, you need to mute yourself. Um, let me let me mute it. I didn't see it. I'll call you. All right, guys. So let's take a half an hour break. So we'll be back at one thirty, and then after at one thirty, we will now carry on. Okay. So good. How have you found the session? I hope you've learned a lot. Yes, it will work for you, Chimka. It doesn't matter what your background is right now. What matters is that you add the skills that are required for you to get the to be up to date in the industry that we live in now, because you know it cuts across all sectors, don't you? Okay. So we'll be back at 1:30. So I'll just put that here. Back at 1:30 p.m. Good. All right, guys. So back at 1:30 p.m.
All right, guys, so I'm back. Um, just confirm you can hear me, please, and you can still see my screen. Um, and then I can uh, continue. Hello. <laughs> okay. All right, good stuff. All right, so um, we can now kick off, which is uh, very good. All right, so now um, let's get to basics. I think that's a good start. I think uh, that will really, really help. Um, now you understand that it's important for a company to go through digital transformation. You know that um, if they don't go through digital transformation, they will be disrupted by other companies who are leading the way in uh, using advancing technologies to enhance every area of their business and they will start to lose you will realize that that business that is not transforming will start to lose market share will start to lose um not just market share but their sales will start to drop and not just sales um they'll realize that they have less satisfied customers i'm sure some of you have heard of your friends using a particular um uh, bank and how everything is so cool and your bank is not up to date and you change banks or another service it's just how it is and you think at the end of the day you don't want to be seen as backward thinking you want to be seen as forward thinking so every business has to enhance every area of their business activity processes channels in order for them to be able to, be able to integrate into the uh their customer's lifestyle who lives in today's digital age so that means that if you think about us as a company so this is where i would go to this area over here uh, digital transformation I don't know why this thing never opens up. I have to now open it again. So I'll, what I'll do here is I'll actually just open up our uh, digital transformation implementation strategy. So this is this is our own official document for our own digital transformation strategy. So imagine the presentation I just took you through, and now imagine that I actually created a strategy document for it. So for us, as a company, we wanted um, to, like, one, know what our digital strategy will be and create a business case for it by knowing what our customers wanted. Look at our current state. Uh, what are the drawbacks and benefits of the current state? Look at the target state where we look to digitize and automate and be customer centric. And then we created the di digital strategy roadmap um, where we define the strategic roadmap uh, on a program level. Then we implemented the strategy uh, where we created portfolio management, benefit management, and prioritized. Uh, scope of work and then we have what we call continuous review and process improvement uh, by going through an agile development process now for us it was all about integrating to our customers lifestyle so we look at you over here uh, we know that all of you are calling from far away the only way we can um, meet meet your needs or be able to um, um, literally enable you to enjoy the platform is by um, allowing you to be able to call you from anywhere, anytime in the world. And that is integrating into your lifestyle. So that was our digital strategy. Um, uh, that was the objectives of our digital strategy. So when you go for a job interview and they ask you, what's the objective of your of the company's digital business strategy? You just say that they wanted to use digital technology to integrate into customers' lifestyles in order to be a lot more customer-centric. So first of all, you look at the matur digital maturity model. Where are we? So at that point, well, last year we were, about two years ago, we were explorers. Last year, we were digital players. This year, we then kicked off to being a digital transformer and now becoming a disruptor. Why? Um, and where are we actually ultimately going to? We actually want to get to a point whereby, um, we want to get to a point whereby the enterprise is aggressively disrupting, uh, disruptive in the use of new digital technologies and business models to affect markets. Ecosystem awareness and feedback into const is a constant input to business innovation. So we actually constantly take feedback from you guys to continue to innovate and look at the way we do things. And the business remakes existing market and creates new one uh, to its own advantage and is fast moving target for competition. So now none of our competitors know what the heck we are doing. They're so confused. <laughs> So um, what was important to us, we, we looked at, uh, for us, we looked at the three pillars, uh, customer experience, how do we look, use digital capabilities to improve customer experience, how do we uh, use digital capabilities to improve operational process, and how do we use digital capabilities to improve our overall business model. So this is kind of the strategy definition side of things, okay? 
So um, uh, for us, we looked at customer experience, people organization and operations and the areas that we'll be focusing on and decided that data will be the foundation of everything we do. We'll identify the digital enablers that will help us achieve this and then look at the emerging technologies that we can take advantage of. Okay, so we created a roadmap. What would we do? Well, we'll first of all assess where we are, um, scan for opportunities, what's available to us, uh, create a revision our strategy and goals, and then create a business case for our transformation initiative, uh, commit the budget to it, and then go through an iterative development uh, process and deliver on an incremental basis and then scale as we grow. And then we'll continue that process over and over again. But first, we must know exactly who our target audiences are. What digital channels are they using? What motivates them? What are their pain points? What are the things that they find difficult as they connect with us and before they come to us? And what's the profile of that person so that we can actually create a um, package that works for those people? Then we have to understand the customer journey lifestyle. So there's customer journey map. So for example, in terms of customer acquisition, acquiring customers, what is a customer journey? In terms of customer um, advocacy, that's customer retention, what is the customer journey map? So in getting you, what is the perfect way, what's the best practice way to get you, and how can we use digital technology to do that? So let me give an example of that. When you see our ad on digital, on social media, Facebook, you click on it, it takes you to a mobile site. You um, um, answer a few questions, you fill out your details, and automatically your account is created, and then you get a text message, and you also get an email from us. That is called, that's called email automation. And, um, and then you get a phone call from one of our salespeople, that's called sales automation. Everything is automated. So we had to digitize that service and uh, rather than have it be manual. But what about when you're on the platform? How do we make sure that everything is digitized and automated as well? So there's customer acquisition, uh, there's uh, the customer experience journey for customer acquisition and customer experience journey for when you're on the platform, which is customer advocacy. Um, from that then we have to look at our digital revenue model for example how do we get customers and how we grow customers and what digital technologies can help us to achieve this and then we then looked at the uh, in terms of being customer uh, centric we look at the digital operational excellence uh, excellence what are the areas of the business that we need to digitize in order for us to be um, to deliver customer experience so look at digitized end-to-end -end customer experience uh, look at digitized products and services as part of the value ecosystem. Look at creating trusted machines where we're informed by data. That is for the customer. For the enterprise, source enhanced operational capabilities with a dynamic ecosystem. Drive rapid customer -cent uh, centric innovation and digitize for uh, agility over efficiency. So those are two important things that we looked at when it came to the enterprise and when we came to the business as a whole. So we now ask ourselves, looking at the customer experience maturity model, where do we want to be? We want to have lifetime customers. That's where we're going. So we're going, we understand that we, we, there's a strategy to attract the customer. There's a strategy to convert the customer, but then there's also a strategy to keep that customer uh, with us for life. So for us, the lifetime value of a customer is 3,500 pounds. How do we get 3,500 pounds from you over the next three to five years? That is what is important to us as a business. Now, for us to get £3,500 from you over the next three to five years, we must be giving you what you want. You must be seeing value in what we are doing. So that means that even though you're going to pay for this training, this is the first one of 695 that's 695 minus 3,500. That's still 2,000 something we need to collect from you. So that means you must get a job. Once you get a job, we can upsell other things to you and keep upselling to you because it's worked for you. So we now have to focus on what technologies are available that can help us maintain that lifetime customer, uh, which is important. So I'm hoping that this is kind of making sense now. Uh, so the first thing we realized that we had to do was we had to centralize everything we are doing. When customer service calls, let them know what is going on in regards to IT, in regards to your, um, basically, let's say you've been on the product for three months, and then the system tells us that you're due for, to, for subscription renewal. We don't want to call you and say, hey, your subscription has expired, or you have paid. You'll be like, well, I haven't gotten a job, why am I paying you? We want to actually know what is going wrong. Have you gotten a job? Have you not gotten a job? We want to know what your challenges are. So we want the system to be fully integrated across all channels so that any history in regards to you, any activity or any of your activities on the platform, we have a record of it. So that when we call you that, look, your subscription has expired, though, 
We either know you've gotten a job and say, hey, you've gotten a job, congratulations, your subscription expired. Don't you want to remove up the career ladder? Do you want to stay in this one job? Don't you want to do big data? Oh, yes, I want to renew your subscription. You know, so that will help us now have better client acquisition, better client uh, retention, and a better return on investment. So let me quickly show you how we did that. Um, that's actually uh, something we've already implemented now. We're not there, we're not fully there yet, but we're getting very, very close to it. So if I go to Salesforce right now and I type in Oyuna, Oyuna, as a candidate, what you will find is that I have all the meetings that Oyinua has attended since she joined the company. I have the product that she has joined. I have the people she's referred to the company. I have her orders, the product she's bought from us. I have all the messages. I have all her login details when she logs into the platform. And I have all the email campaigns we've sent to her and all the opportunities that are created on her, any issues that she has logged with us, any orders she's made. Why is this important? Because the history of the customer enables you to know exactly how to engage that customer. And that customer feels like you know them, you know? So this is a test data, by the way, <laughs> just to let you know. You, um, I can obviously show you real customer data at this point in time. But this is on Salesforce CRM. So this is our customer relationship management system. That's a cloud-based uh, automate out of um, Salesforce cloud okay so now carrying on so by this time so basically for us we defined our digital transformation strategy as as DBT's digital business transformation initiative is to create a centralized customer data center with multi-channel integration across all channels. So basically, we take our operational channel, marketing channel, customer experience channel, sales support channel, and basically digitize and automate all of that and link it and then make sure that it is connected to a centralized customer data center. So it doesn't matter what channel they're coming from, it's all feeding into the same data center. This will enable the digitization and automation of all areas of the business while having a mobile first strategy because 95% of our customers will be accessing us via their mobile platform, allowing us to perfectly, perfectly integrate into our customer's lifestyle. The expected business benefit as follows, better client retention, better client uh, acquisition, higher return on investment, increased market valuation, strong competitive advantage, dominating the educational industry by being a major disruptor through the effective use of digital technology that's top platform technology. I will explain to you what top platform technology is when your training starts. Now, that now led us to understand exactly what we should be doing. So what on earth should we be doing? Well, we want to increase our subscriber rates through customer centricity to increase revenue. We want to attract new and engage existing, uh, want to attract new and engage existing new candidates um, around the world by providing the best work experience and on the job learning platform that is accessible anytime, anywhere. So what are the key uh, areas that generate further goods for us, content, making sure that every time you log into the platform, you have valuable content. Marketing, making sure that every that but we're able to invest in the right marketing channels and drive down operation uh, marketing costs and increase conversion rate. Speed, accessibility, and availability, accessible anytime, anywhere, and instant, and, 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 and it's, it's loading within two to three seconds of you being to our website. Then digitization and optimization, making sure that everything is digitized and automated. So by doing that, we were able to understand that, okay, this is, oh, sorry. Why did that shut down? I don't know. Let me open it up again. Sorry, guys. Just... Yeah, I tend to do a lot of work for a few clients here and there, so um, let me just close this down. All right, so let's continue. No, not this one. Oh, that's annoying. I have to clean it up all the way. There we go. I think I'll just not put it in presentation mode. My computer is extremely overloaded. Okay, so for us, we realized that actually our strap line was to create digital products and services so good, prospective and existing candidates prefer to use them. We felt that digital, digital, uh, creating a digitalized, digitalized self-service e-work experience platform was critical. Reinventing the customer experience was critical. Being available anywhere 
accessible anytime, uh, anywhere, and available 24-7 is important, is critical. Having a mobile first uh, strategy with multi-channel integration, now it's unified systems, I'll explain that to you later, and streamlined customer-centric digital products and services was key to success. So what was our first strategy? Mobile first strategy, being informed by data, automating, digitizing, and customer centricity. Now, what you need to understand is this. This is the job. You see, the creating the creation of all this strategy is the job of the digital solutions architect and the digital business analyst from the business side. I'll repeat this again. The job of the person who creates this strategy is the digital solutions architect and the job of the digital business analyst from the business side. This kind of person would operate from a program or portfolio level and not on a project level because they are the ones that are now going to create the portfolio of projects to achieve this ultimate goal. So by the time they now create a business case, they will now hand it over to the program office who will now break all of this, this, this big business case into a portfolio of projects and a portfolio of programs, which is what our program office now did. So we now called it the DDX, Digital Transformation Portfolio, which is the Digital Transformation mar uh, Marketing Deliverables. So what were the projects? Well, these are all the portfolios of programs and projects. First of all, we needed governance. We had coming up with a new, we are com we're implementing projects that are totally different from the way we do things. We need to roll things out pretty quickly. We need a new digital governance. So we created a project called Digital uh, Transformation Governance to create a new framework for digital excellence. This you will find that every other company is doing. Then we realized that it was critical that we had a centralized customer data center, and to do that, we had to make sure that uh, the, um, we had to do data. We had to make sure that we had the, our data, the integrity of our data, was um, um, maintained. Uh, we had to do segmentation, sales and service automation, and digital channel integration. So that was where the CRM project came into play. We now had to integrate all of our platforms into the eWork Experience platform, including CRM. So that is what you guys will now experience when you log in. Then we need to make sure that we were 100% cloud, not storing anything anywhere. Then mobility, having a mobile first strategy. Then making sure that data is at the forefront of everything we do. Making sure that all of our digital channels are plugged in and optimized into our CRM. And then making sure that we had a payment gateway where people can pay anywhere in the world. So you can see that these portfolios of projects will now create recruitment for project managers and business analysts, but from a digital perspective, because we know somebody who has experience in this area. So when we say that as a project manager, if you get a job as a project manager now, and you have to work on platform integration, digital marketing, data center, mobility, but how, even if you are an experienced project manager, where would you start? You don't even know anything about these things. Now, BMP, mobile referral payment system, um, so that people can refer people to us. DX instant messaging, that's Riva, the application. Some of these things, we've already built them. Um, Eagle Eye is where we're doing um, business intelligence and uh, big data analytics. Bot is where we're actually, because I want to get rid of my customer service person. Somebody said just now that, oh my God, uh, I called the office, you still don't pick up. We want robots to start speaking to you now. If you call the office, nobody picks up, a robot will speak to you. So we are, we are building um, artificial intelligence, virtual customer service person. Then cybersecurity, we have to be GDPR compliant. As we are more and more data driven and more and more digitized, we have to be compliant, we have to be PCI compliant, and we must make sure that we're not vulnerable to um, attacks. So those are the portfolio of projects we now have in the company. As a result, we now need to, re it needs to be managed by a program office. The program office manages portfolios of projects. They manage the benefits, so benefit realization, they manage the cost, they manage the resources, and they manage the stakeholders on the portfolio level because this portfolio is a collection of projects and programs. A program is a collection of projects, and a portfolio is a collection of programs and projects. Why do you call it a program? A program is when a project is so big, you have to break it into smaller projects. So it's still based on achieving one objective, but you broke it into smaller projects. So it is now a program which has a collection of projects. And you realize that a com a, 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 the, the program office can have a portfolio of programs and also smaller projects. And that is why the program office's job is to manage, monitor, and control the successful delivery of the business objectives in line with the projects and programs that we have in place. And that's where you have a program director, a program manager, you would have a PMO analyst, a program planner. 
okay, operating on a program level, on a portfolio level. Then you then move on to the people who are going to be managing and implementing those projects. That's where you have your project managers who manages the timeline, the budget, and the resources for that actual project. Then you then have the project coordinator who supports the project manager. You have the business analyst whose job is to translate the business case for the raw digital transformation initiative and translate it for that project into technical requirements and communicate it back and forth until the system is delivered. So you realize that these two people are not the people building the system, but the people managing and also analyzing how we will go about implementing it in order for it to be delivered. The project manager manages the team of developers, the team of um, stakeholders, the team of um, um, third party uh, partners, other be it internal or external clients and everybody to deliver the system while the business analyst translates the business requirements into technical requirements and communicates it back and forth until it is delivered. So we will now focus on building your expertise as a project manager and also as a business analyst. Then you will specialize where you want to be, uh, whether you're a PM or you're a BA, or you actually want to work within the program office where you're supporting the portfolio of projects and you work as a PMO analyst or you work as a program planner or a basically more work as a planner, more or less. So that is basically how it all works. So when you hear digital transformation, what does it mean? Basically, it's a business using digital technologies and digital strategy to enhance every area of their business in order for them to gain a competitive advantage, to gain market share, to increase market valuation and increase revenue. So that means that they will have to come up with a portfolio of programs and projects to achieve their digital transformation initiative, which means that they will have to have uh, a program office where you have a program director or program team um, a program team, which includes your program director, your program um, uh, accountant or program account officer, um, you have your uh, PMO analyst, um, and then related with a few third party, with a number of third party partners and other departments. And then you then have each project having a project manager whose job is to manage, monitor, and control the project based on a justifiable business case in order to deliver the project successfully. And that project manager would have a business analyst whose job is to um, make sure that the business case is translated into technical requirements and communicated back and forth until they deliver the um, um until they deliver the system and that is basically it so is digital transformation essential for you yes i showed you the job job board everybody every company is going through it so if you want to be a project manager or business analyst you must understand digital transformation and that is why i'm going to throw it in free of charge just google digital transformation anywhere i think a one day class by e consultancy just one day class is 595 dollars and that just covers overview kind of what i've just done for you um they will charge you 595 dollars for it and it won't be on this in-depth level if you now want to do it properly you'll be paying around 14,000 euros that's the cheapest I've seen, uh, but I'm going to throw all of that free of charge for you as part of your package. But remember that it's only for those that are taking the offer off by on Monday. If you're not taking the offer, I am not giving you digital transformation free of charge. Okay. Now, on top of that, if you now have digital transformation, they can now work on our digital transformation projects. That's the reason why I'm even throwing it free of charge because you will find it difficult to work on the projects if you can't manage what you don't understand, you can't analyze what you don't understand. And then you can now decide that, oh, I would love to be a project manager, I would love to be a business analyst based on what your personality test actually tells you. So I'm going to stop and just look at questions. I can see one question. What is relationship between uh, digital transformation and SAP? SAP, digital transformation, remember what I said to you before, digital transformation is, is, is a business looking to use digital technology to transform their business. SAP is an application or a tool that you use to, end, to, 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 to kind of carry on with whatever objectives you're trying to carry on with your business. It's like CRM. SAP is, 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 a, is a product like CRM, like Microsoft products and all those things. So there's a big difference between the two. Okay. So you could say that um, we, um, for us to transform, we need this particular SAP product to be able to do that. Okay. That's if they provide it. But I don't know much about that in that respect. Now, uh, KG, please carefully explain the difference between project manager and business analyst. You were too fast. So I'll explain it again. So a project manager's job is to manage, monitor, and control the timeline, the 
budget and resources of that project according to a justified business case in order to deliver the project successfully. While a business analyst role is to create a, is to, most of the time the business case is created. If it's not created, create that business case and translate the business case from business requirements into technical requirements so the developers can build it and actually deliver it successfully. That's the difference between the two. Okay, now where does GDPR come from? Well, let's think about it. GDPR is a data protection law. We are collecting customer data. We are keeping your data. We need to be compliant according to the new uh, data um, EU data protection law, and that's where GDPR comes in. So, whatever application we are building, we have to consider GDPR and not break the law so that we get sued. So that is where GDPR comes into play. I hope it makes sense. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Okay, how do we specific how do we know where specifically where to fit in? This is why it is important for you to take your digital personality test, which you all took last week. Um, if you haven't taken it, I'll show you where to take it. Okay, and you take your test, and then you would and then when you do your training, your training starts on um, on Saturday or the weekly intensive, we will now train you in both project management and business analysis. Now you've taken your test, it's told you what you should do. You've now done the training PM and BA. Now get involved in projects, call in as a PM, call into project, call into project meetings, listen to what PM does, listen to what BA does. Now you are informed, you can make a decision on where you want to specialize in. I hope that makes sense. Okay, good. Is Samsung using disruptive weapons against? Ah, yeah. Well, in fact, Samsung and iPhone are, and Apple are using disruptive weapons against each other, and that is why they're constantly leading the way in innovation. <laughs> they're constantly using it against each other. I hope it makes sense. Okay, so that's good. Let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, any reasons why you chose to combine both courses? Yes, uh, the reason being is because project management is not rocket science. We, we can teach it in two, three days. Business analysis, we can teach it. In, I teach business analysis everything in one day. My other guys teach it in two days. You know, because it, it's pretty, look, the business analysis has techniques. Project management has principles, themes, and processes. Once the principle, themes, and processes are explained to you, you're, go you're good to go. Um, techniques, what's the techniques I explained to you, you're good to go. The problem is application. The problem is experience. So what we do is we teach you both of them, have a clear understanding of both of them, decide which one to work with. But the thing about it is that you can't be a project manager without relating to BAs. And you can't be a BA without relating to project managers. So you might as well know what each person does. So when you apply for work, you know how to relate to each other. Because it's all about experience, isn't it? I like managing projects as well as ensuring policies and governance as adhering to. So would you say, yeah, so you can apply for a GDPR project manager role. So that means you will join the GDPR team and then you will also get involved in the digital projects and then build your digital, uh, your project management experience. Very simple, very simple. That's basically, so you got it now. That's good. I'm actually quite happy people are getting it. What does the work, in, work experience entail? The work experience entails access to video tutorials where you can listen to videos of how we've managed past projects. And you can also listen to lectures. It attends attending uh, weekly training sessions even after your uh, um, your weekly intensive training or weekend intensive training there are still online training sessions that we carry on because we can't teach you everything in one week and then you have access to the tools and softwares you will call in and shadow experts managing the projects you will contribute you'll be assigned work to do you will continue to build your experience until you become an expert then you get assigned a mentor who will guide you through your CV, help you with your cover letter, help you with interview questions and answers, apply for a job, and when you get a job, you request for a reference from us. That is what the e-work experience entails. I hope it makes sense. People are still typing, so I'll wait for people to type and ask more questions. Yes, companies look for um, hybrid roles. Companies look for BAs, hybrid PMs and BAs. But what you have to understand is that they... You have to be very careful because, um, so example, when, so, uh, if, if a company is looking for, uh, let me just type it, let me just type, I'll just type it here now. Uh, okay, so, yeah. 
So companies look for business analysts to PM roles. But what you will see is that whenever they do this, when they put BA first, that means they're looking for a business analyst with PM experience. Okay, it's very important. So if you are naturally a project manager, you won't apply for that one. Okay, now you can now have project manager, the business analyst. I hope you guys are appreciating what you're getting today. <laughs> so you can see project business analyst to project manager. Okay, they're looking for a BA. They're looking for a BA with project management experience. In fact, most of these jobs are actually looking for BAs with project manager experience. So you're naturally a BA, okay, rather than a um, the experienced project manager, senior business analyst. So do you understand where I'm coming from now? So it's always, it's always so project manager business. So this is not a BA role. Okay, uh, this one is business project manager, PM product. So this one is looking, this one is looking for project manager. So whenever they are looking for a hybrid role, they are actually looking for a BA who has project management experience. That's the that's the role. So if you ever want to be a hybrid, just make sure that you're naturally a BA. It's very important. During the course of the work experience, are there further training costs to expect? Uh, no, there's no other cost apart from if you want to you now add especially skills. So you want to add GDPR. Uh, instead of paying um, 880 pounds, you will get it at a discounted price of 299. You want to add big data. Instead of you paying 1,200 pounds, you get it at a discounted price of 299. You want to get your digital marketing certification. Instead of you paying 1,500 pounds, you get it at 660. So once you are a DBT candidate, you get everything in the company discounted even if you want to take your agile certification your prince 2 certification your bcs certification we have agreed a 30 percent discount with our partners so we keep with um knowledge with um, um knowledge academy and all the partners that we have we have agreed a 30 percent discount so once you join us everything becomes cheap for you i hope it makes sense uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can see a BA role that pays £700 a day. It's all down to your experience, you know. I won't look for what pays more. I'll look for what you are naturally gifted at. So BA and PM work experience equips you to do BA and manage projects. Yes, correct. Um, the shadowing roles, is that on site or online? Remember, we are an e-work experience platform, so everything is online. All you have to do, just like you're calling into this call right now, you will call into a project meeting and you listen to project managers and business analysts argue and fight all day. You see people insulting each other. You see, like, it's, it's real fun. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of politics here. And then also there are training sessions that you can call in as well. Uh, please, can I do my test today? Yes, you can do your test today. So, um, to know my natural gift. So, for those of you that have not done your test, I will send you the link to do your test. Now, remember that you must have logged in. Now, a lot of you have, well, when you join our platform, you would have logged in. So, you need to remember your password. If you don't remember your password, you will not be able to take your test. Okay? So, so that's it. So, this is where you take your test. Now, it would ask you, um, so what you need to do first is log in. If you don't log in, this is what's going to happen. It will tell you that your account, it will tell you your email already exists. So I'm hoping to God that you all remember your passwords now. This is how you take your test. So that's it there. And click on that link and you can take your test. The first thing you need to do is you need to log in. So make sure you log into your eWork Experience platform and you can take your test. If you don't know what your password is, you will need to call the office to reset your password for you. Or there's a password reset option on the site so that you can actually log in. Let me now show you because some of you might be doing this. So I'm, I'm actually going to log out of the eWork Experience platform. I'm going to log out now and I'm going to show you what I mean by logging in. So just follow these instructions I have. If you've never created an account with us, so if you've never um, set up an account with us, then you just click on that test and take the test. But if you have created an account with us before, uh, it will not allow you to. So all you have to do is click on login here. So you can see login here, enter your company, enter your email and enter your password and then log in. Once you have done that, then go to the link I sent you. Okay, become a digital expert, uh, digital expert and then take your test from there. Okay, because if I take this test right now, it's going to first, it's going to basically ask me for my name, then it's going to ask me for my email. And if, for me to get my result, it will now ask me for my email. If you now enter an email that already exists in our system, you will get your test results. I hope it makes sense. And also, it also registers your mobile number as well. So please make sure that you're not using details you've already used before. If not, you won't be able to use it at all. So if you've not registered, then you can register now. Okay, and then you can take your test.
I'm just gonna wait to see if you have any more questions. Okay, as a new person to project management, can the videos be put in order to aid uh, what we watch? Yes, the videos are put in order to aid what you watch. And um, basically, there's an onboarding session we have every Tuesday once you start, where we tell you the first videos you should actually listen to. So don't worry too much about it. It's all mixed up. No, it's actually <coughs> not mixed up. <coughs> <coughs> It's actually not mixed up. The thing about it is that you don't know how to use it. So there's an onboarding session that's held on Tuesdays for new starters so that you know how to use it, okay? How soon can it all happen from training, work experience, to mentoring, to getting a job? Average is three months. So if you are committed 100% on the platform, you should get a job in eight to 12 weeks. If you are partly committed or you're a slow learner, then you'll get a job in six months. If you're just not bothered and you come in once in a while, it will take you a year to get a job. So it's really what you put in that you get out of it. So at the end of the training, do we get a certification? Now, for the work experience, you don't get a certification because when you go for a job interview, they don't ask for certification for work experience, they ask for reference. But when you decide to do your certification, say for example, DMI or GDPR, you get a certification from us for those. If after taking the test, you are qualified to be a PM, but you would rather train as a P PM, then that's up to you. Our test is supposed to guide you, okay? We are not, it's not a law that, oh, this is your result. It's supposed to guide you. But I'll tell you this, 95% of the people that take their test, once they stick to it, they get a job very, very quickly. Why? Because it's very true to yourself. All those people that took the test last week, they will all confirm that they, it was basically in line with what they were planning to do. So my recommendation is do what you are called to do, not what you think you should do. It's very important. So at the end of the week, okay, I've answered that question. Let me look over here. Um, yeah, so after 90 days, I expect you to have gotten a job. If you haven't gotten a job, to renew your subscription, you just pay £99 for three more months. There's always an offer. It's normally £99 for 30 days, but you just need to wait for an offer and you will get £99 for three more months. Um, Okay, as a digital expert or personal, uh, no, the, the, the personality, digital personality test helps you to know what role you should focus on as a digital expert. Because as a digital expert, you're either a digital project manager, digital solutions architect, big data analyst, or whatever role that you are able to specialize in. When do we get our company email? Once you are fully paid, um, uh, your company email is set up. Uh, and also, it will be set up before the 30th or just after the 30th because of the amount of people that are coming on board. Okay, so you won't get a company email now. But KJ, I did my test before, however, it didn't give me results. So what do I do? That is because you are not logged in. So you need to call the office and tell them to reset your password so you can log in and get your test. Um, is your comp is some class learning? Look, it's up to you. I've mentioned this many, many times. You can decide to come to classroom or you can decide to do it online. If you, those of you online right now, look, the training is just like this. Is even a lot more interactive than what I've done here, okay? Because this one is free. So if you're enjoying what you are doing now and you are learning, then it's no different from classroom because you're still listening to a lecture. The only thing is that you can't touch my face or feel my face. It's the same thing. So if you want to mix and match, come to class, do online. Mm -hmm. If you want to do online, mm -hmm. if you want to do classroom, mm -hmm. you decide. It's the same thing that you are getting. If you're already registered, how can you do your test? Then log in and click on the link I told you and then take your test. If you've forgotten your password, make sure that you call the office and ask them to reset your password. It's asking you for a company email because you've not paid. Cancel it. Uh, it will keep asking you for company email every single time. It the only thing you're allowed to do free of charge on our platform is to take the test. Anything else you have to pay for. And that's why before you can do anything, it's asking for a company email. Because you can't have access to our projects. You can't have access to sensitive materials unless you're part of the company. Will we have access to analysis tools away from? Yes, you have access to all our tools and softwares. That's the benefits of joining DBT. Uh, which means do you, um, um, 
yeah yeah no uh, so, so um so it depends on what package you choose with for me uh it all depends so for example if you're paying in full obviously you're getting your 695 deal if you're doing your part payment is of 300 that means you'll have a balance of 810 uh, sorry 510 to pay so remember is if you're paying by the 25th of um by the 25th which is monday this monday you get a 695 all inclusive if you're splitting your payment, you have to pay three hundred pounds by twenty fifth Monday, and then you will pay five ten at the end of the month. So it's more expensive. You have to understand that, okay? So um um, but and also you won't get your full days. You might just get maybe twenty days until when your payment is due. So part payment is for people who can't afford it. Uh, but you don't get as well. You still get the same thing. It's just that you have to call to get your extra days, and you're paying a lot more. So we always encourage people to just pay full and you get more uh you actually get a lot more as well um um so on monday my staff will call every single person who has committed to pay and we will take your payment for you so don't worry too much or you can call the office and make your payment so it's either you call or they call you hi i did my test it was business analyst um, business intelligence and business analyst wonderful so what you now need to do is you need to get involved in the project you need to complete your training now in your training you will gain more understanding you will go back and look at your test you will now join projects get involved in projects you know when you practice something over and over again you will know what you like you will know what you don't like and eventually you will choose what to specialize in by the time you update one report update one project plan by the time you write one business case create a process flow diagram you will know the one you like the one you don't like and you know whether you want to be a pm or ba now if you're Personality test tells you that you're a BA and you enjoy the BA but hate the PM. The personality test has confirmed what you already knew. And that's the beautiful thing about the platform. I hope it makes sense. How did my test? Okay, so please, what's the company number and can I call now? Today is a Saturday. I'm the only person that works on a Saturday. The rest of my staff don't. don't. Uh, trainers work on Saturday, but they are training right now, as you already know. You know, So I'm just the only person here right now. Uh, doing this but when you call on Monday uh, you can definitely make that payment um, the number is on the website so if you go to our website um, all you have to do is um, or just call for me some of you might have Fumi's number just call for me or just type on telegram that you are ready to pay on Monday and they'll call you so just click on contact us on our website page over here and you have the telephone number come up and that's the London office right there if you're based in London as long as it's paid within the stipulated time frame of end of October, so it's twenty fifth of October. That's when you have to pay your six nine five. Uh, if you're paying uh, by the end, sorry, twenty fifth of September. I repeat that. Sorry, it's twenty fifth of September. That's this Monday that you have to pay your six nine five, and then you um, and then you don't have anything else to pay. If you want to split your payment, you have to pay three hundred pounds by the twenty fifth of September this Monday, and then you pay your five ten balance by the end of October. So you can pay the beginning or or middle, or you pay by the end. So the last day of October is when you pay that. All that all that makes sense. Yes. So you put a three hundred pounds down payment. On Monday and then you pay your balance in October and then you will get full access to the platform you might not get 90 days you might get 30 days but then obviously that covers you until when your next payment is due but you will have all access yes but my recommendation to everybody is that you take the cheapest I mean it's common sense take the cheapest option if you can afford it you know then you don't have to worry about any other cost or look over your shoulder or worry about paying a certain amount next month it's just my opinion okay all right, so that says that, and I don't see any more questions there. So maybe it's time to now move on to explaining what project management is and what business analysis is, because we only have uh, a few minutes left. Uh, do I need certification to get a job? No, you don't need certification to get a job. What you need is experience. Most of our candidates actually get the, a job before they do the certification because experience matters more. Can I still pay by Monday? Of course you can pay by Monday. Um, um, and that's fine so you can another thing you can do um some people have called me and said oh i can't start until next month or i can't start on the month after if you can pay your deposit or you can pay your 695 then you are perfectly fine we could hold the same offer for you we normally don't like doing that but we can do that for you okay so as long as you're paying on monday then you're perfectly fine in that respect but once again you're better off paying the 695 offer instead of you paying 810 but once again that is your choice 
I've registered but not able to watch the videos, you need to log in. So my advice to you is that, you know what, do me a favor. For those of you that have registered but that cannot log in, just do me a favor and send me send me a private message on Telegram with your career, with your, sorry, with your personal email that you used to create the account and I will reset your password for you, okay? So because you, what you need is a password reset. So just send me a personal message on Telegram and then tell me what, tell me that you want to log in and create, um, log in, give me your, give me the email you used to create an account that you don't remember your password for and then I would reset it for you. Or if not, um, just create an account if you've never done it before. Uh, can I still pay on Monday? Yes, you can pay on Monday. Do we uh do we reg register for Prodo? Once you have joined, once your account is created, uh, let me show you. Once your account is created, all you do is you go and look at a project and you join it. There are tons of projects to choose from. So you choose the one you want and then you join it and then automatically you're added to those projects and you're added to all the communication uh, platforms. So for example, I click on total of 183 projects and then I'll look at the live projects and I'll join whichever one I want. You know, and once I've joined, that is it. Then you go to project meetings and look at all the project meetings that I hold in. So I can just click on, I can join Digital Landlord and now I've joined that project and I'll get an email to my company email inviting me to that project and inviting me to the communication channel on that project. Okay. And that's basically how it works. It's nothing more than that. I hope it makes sense. All right. And then if you want to attend project meetings, just go to the meetings and attend a project meeting. Just that simple. Um, when is the next training? The next training session is starting this Saturday, the 30th. Um, and um, or you can do Monday to Friday, any Monday to Friday in or in um, October. That is what your discount holds for you. If you're doing November and you're not paying on Monday, it will cost you 1790 And if we do do a discount, it won't be anything less than £810, which you will have to pay in full. So every the thing about it is that when we do an offer, it's very important that you take it. For example, somebody told me that, oh, um, um, about, I think it was six months ago, you had uh, a 599 offer. And I said, yeah. He said, oh, why are you going to bring it back? No, never. So it always goes up. There's never, it never becomes cheaper. It's always more expensive. You know, it's um, the only thing we just recently did this year is if you can pay by a certain date, um, you get it at 695, but that is when we do that date. So for example, we did the same thing last time. If you pay by a certain date of five, you can pay 599, but we've never brought that offer again. So now the 20th is you have 695 by the 20th of September. If you don't pay that next year, the next offer will be 800 and something pounds um, rather than obviously this offer. So it's always best to take it when you have it. Uh, please, do we get access for, to free internet access in the hub? Yes, you do. Um, it will make sense for you to go there and not have internet access in the hub. <laughs> um, 695 offer I shall pay on Monday. Nice one. Uh, I think you missed my question. Do we watch videos first or attend meetings? No, you do a combination of the both. So, for example, if your training starts on Saturday, after your training on Saturday, go and check your calendar. Are there meetings on Sunday? Yes, attend the meetings. So you are learning and practicing at the same time. It's work experience. It is not training. So you have to remember that. Please note that you are here to gain work experience. So don't go and make the mistake of just listening to videos and then uh, and listening to training and miss the project because you'll be lost. Okay. Um, is it possible to do digital marketing and GDPR segregation? Yes, you can. And like I said, GDPR is 299, digital marketing is 660, all heavily discounted. But be patient, you know. Um, you, if you have the money to pay for everything now, you can. If not, be patient because you can still use. Um, remember, I'm giving you digital transformation free of charge. So you know, if you're getting digital transformation free of charge, that means that you are already ready to apply for a digital project manager or business analyst role. So be patient, or unless you want to pay for everything straight away. Uh, 695 deadline is Monday 25th, as I said earlier before. KG, please, do we get resource with the work experience? Yes, of course, you get resources with your work experience. Everything is digitized, everything is online, and you have access to it all, okay? Uh, please, are we to watch almost watch videos yes you must all you must all let me even show you so basically remember the guy that asked the question of oh the videos are not in order they are in order you just not be you don't just know you just not uh, attended an onboarding session so for example i want to listen to project management videos so i come over here it's telling you that you must watch all 24 videos so i've only watched 16 of 24 and you can see my progress bar from there so what happens these are my videos okay as you can see like so 
So on my videos, it says click here to get started. Follow the instructions. Okay, so click here to get started and it will tell you that start by listening to the most watched videos in the following categories in the following order. PMO framework, taking minutes. So the first thing you need to learn is PMO framework. Why? Because this is the process that we are going to teach you. So when we train you, you can come back here and listen to the videos of what you've been trained again. All right, so use this filter, use this as a filter. So let me use my filter. So I will click on most watched videos. I will go to PMO framework. See, and then I start listening to the PMO framework videos. It's just that simple. <laughs> I hope it makes sense, you know. And then when you're done, you go to the next thing. What did it tell you? It said the next thing you should do is listen to taking minutes. Okay, so I'll go to category and I'll look for taking minutes. Taking minutes, and then I listen to the video in taking minutes. It's just that simple. And then you follow the same process. We are going to teach you in the same process. So since we're teaching you the same process, you'll be able to listen to the videos in the same process. So like I said, it's because it's work experience. So unless you're part of the company and you've gone through induction and you've gone through training, you won't know what is going on on the platform. And we've deliberately made it like that because we don't want people coming here, listening to our videos, blagging their way into a job interview, getting a job, and then not being able to perform. You need to do the work over here. Under the menu, do I click to do my, uh, okay, so on your, no, remember, I just said, I'll send it again. Remember, guys, I sent you a link, so I'll send the link again. This is, once you are logged in, remember, once you are logged in, just come here and click on this link. I'm going to send it again. Please, guys, you, you, in, in this company, you have to listen, you have to pay attention, you know, just like you would do in any other company. So, first, log in, then click on this link. Now, if you don't remember your password, you need to call on Monday to have your password reset, okay? Or like I said to you before, send me a message with the email you used to create the account and I will reset your password for you, okay? Uh, so uh, you can send me a message on Telegram. So let me just, let me just, so I am here. Click <laughs> on my profile pic and send me a message so i'm trying to make it as clear as possible so that you can now you can know how to send me a message all right so you can see i put it on telegram here now where all of you are so just click on my all you have to do is click on my picture and then send me a message can you see what i've done there and then you just if you're using a mobile phone then it's the same thing click on my picture and send me a message and then i will get a message from you it's just that simple i hope it makes sense all right, so that said, let me now move on to actually um, project management and business analysis, but we have literally less, uh, roughly about half an hour left. Okay, so we haven't got much time. All right, so are you guys ready? Good. Let me quickly see if I missed any other questions. Mm, if you have access to videos, it's not playing, check your browser. All right, and check your internet connection. And uh, now you can't pay online, guys, because the price online is one thousand seven ninety. Uh, we're giving you a special discount, which you cannot find on our website. And this is why we, the deadline is the twenty fifth. So if you want to go and pay online, you can pay online. We're happy for you to pay online. It's one thousand seven ninety, and it only comes with thirty days. While the offer on Monday comes with six nine. It doesn't come with digital transformation. While the offer on Monday comes with is at six nine five comes with digital transformation free of charge which is 900 pounds that we charge for comes with three months subscription mentoring and access to all the tools and softwares and also the ecosystem so you have a bloody good deal right there all right let's get started because uh, if not we're not going to we're going to miss out on a lot of things i mean what i'm going to teach you now we're still going to teach you on monday and on, on uh, when you start anyway but at least let me get it let me get on with it first with you guys all right, so I'm just going to go to files and I'm going to go to career insights. Um, somebody asking me, uh, how can they get here? You can't get here. This is company material. <laughs> okay, and um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the PMO um, updated cost 2016. Then um, what am I looking for? I am looking for ding, 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 ding. PMO framework, DBT framework 1.9. Uh, the between 2.0 might be better for me and i can just download that and i can start with that okay so that's good oh give me a pdf it doesn't matter i'll still use it okay so let me 
upload that. So in our company over here, we use a framework. Although this framework I'm showing you is an old framework, in the company now we use the Safe Wajal framework. That is going to, you're going to go through the Safe Wajal methodology on your first day of training. But right now, we, we um, um, this is an old framework because when we moved to digital transformation, we decided to evolve because we now operate on a portfolio level. So because we operate on a portfolio level, we're using Agile methodology on a portfolio level while still maintaining the Prince2 methodology methodology and we still use the waterfall methodology as well so it is called safe watch out okay now unfortunately if you google this you won't find it why because every company out there tailors the methodologies to suit their environment and this is why i always tell people don't make the mistake of going for a job interview and quoting prince too they will all laugh at you we will be very clear you don't have experience because every company tailors to suit their project environment which is the last chapter in the prince two manual the old prince two manual and that's why it's all based on work experience. Okay, so remember what I told you. Our digital transformation of uh, pro initiative is managed by the program office, and we will have to have a program plan and prioritize that portfolio and allocate a budget to it. Then each project manager will create a project plan, set um, actuals and tolerance for that project plan, and then set milestones. This stage we've achieved this. Which stage have achieved this for each stage plan, and each team will then implement what needs to be implemented while the project manager manages, monitors, and controls the budget, resources, and timeline. So you can see how the program office kind of plays into the projects that you will be managing. Now, the DBT project governance, we have a way of governing things over here, which is done by the DBT pre -MO office, which we call over here the Digital Center of Excellence. When you go through your uh, training on Saturday, or when you do the Monday intensive, you will go through the new Safe Wajal methodology. We actually don't show that to anybody because it's very sensitive to us and basically um, we, it's your main advantage over people by the time you talk about safe watch our companies go mad oh my god what's that and then by the time you explain it you, you just blow them away so we try not to make it too available to a lot of people now the governance structure provides support for the team to execute and deliver project outcomes so the sponsor is myself and also my board of directors and then we then have the program office caroline and Ador. you will meet them uh, caroline you will probably meet on the first day that you start the training she's responsible for the entire program office and then she then manages the portfolios of projects and programs here hands down to the project manager who manages the project portfolios and project work streams and then the project manager now manages his team of bas um, and tech people and QA people to deliver the project. So if you think about it over here, we have the business strategy team who comes up with a strategy for how we're going to, um, or our strategy for the year is handed over to the program office who manages the, who converts the strategy into pro portfolio, into a portfolio of programs and projects. And that program is broken down into projects and then the project managers implement the projects. I hope it's making sense now, slowly. So if you look over here, it's kind of a clear structure here. So you have DBT, the business strategy team, and then you then who come up with the strategy, hand over to program directors. The program directors, Caroline and Ador, now have the PMO office, includes the PMO analyst and the program planner, and the and then they maintain the program office and maintain the uh, manage the portfolios of projects and programs. Then the project managers manage the uh, implementation of each of those. Pro um, sorry, then a program manager will be responsible for managing program project managers and the project manager will be responsible for managing the implementation of each and every one of his projects as you can see like so and the project manager has a project team which will include the technical BAs the dev team the creative team and the quality assurance team I hope that makes sense this is the structure of our company over here and that is what you would use for your job interview when they ask about the structure of the company remember it's all based on experience we haven't got time for textbook here the questions will be based on what you do in your current workplace, and that is what you can see right there. I hope it makes sense. Um, I'll leave this out, take time to go through all of this. Uh, so, a program director or manager. The program manager is first and foremost a leader. In fact, the program manager main, um, main leadership duty is to turn chaos into clarity. People need clear direction and circum uh, circumstances that allow them to be successful. The project, uh, the program manager must establish such direction both within and outside the organization through a variety of means. So the program manager is responsible for managing the pro a program director stroke manager responsible for managing the portfolio of programs and managing the benefits, managing the stakeholders and managing the overall resources.
The project manager, in a nutshell, manages is has the responsibility for the and successful implementation of the project itself. So he manages, monitors, and controls the project, not the program. Remember, a program is a portfolio of projects, and a project is part of a program. The project manager has a toolkit, his approach, which is the framework that you'll be taught, the governance structure that we use to manage projects, and the methodology, either the Agile, the uh, Agile, the um, Prince 2, or whatever methodology he's going to be using. Now, he needs to control his project, so he needs control documents like business case, stakeholder analysis, communication plan, project plan, resource plan, all these things will teach you step by step. Then you then, the project manager must report on the status of the project, on the, basically on the progress of the project, on the stages of the project, and those are his reporting tools right there as well. So this kind of gives you an idea of what the project manager actually does. Then the PMO analyst's job is to support the program office, works with the executive management team to develop a strategic direction of the PMO, contributes to, the, to develop the PMO strategic plan, develops new processes, performs process improvement activities, develops and delivers training. So if you notice, the program PMO analyst is not managing projects, but helping to develop and maintain the PMO office and making sure that it's adhering to the governance structure that's already in place. Understand the difference between the two. So you see that a PMO analyst supports the program office and manages relationships, stakeholder relations, and also the project, and also updates, kind of, is a the, the main communicator between the, um, the people managing the projects, the stakeholders, and then also the program office and the business strategy team and external teams as well. Then you have the project planner. This guy is responsible for uh, creating the project plan in terms of defining the stages, defining the budget, defining the resources, kind of developing detailed tasks and work effort assessment, pre uh, prepare short and long term uh, resource allocation plans based on input from all key players of the team members. You know, this place isn't actually a planner and it can be on a program level or it can be on a project level. If it's a program level, just imagine that he has to take all the project plans from all the projects, put it into one, from all the portfolios, put it into one to create a clear direction direction on where we are, where we need to be, what is missing, what needs to be done. You have to be a natural planner to do this job. Then you have the project coordinator. This is somebody who supports the project manager and the work stream managers on all aspects of the project. The project coordinator is kind of a project manager, but is support, but is uh, has a lot of administrative skills, but then also understands the Prince2 methodology or whatever methodology that they are using within the company. Okay, so I would stop there. Uh, the reason why I would, I would stop here, uh, just so you understand, the pro PMO office is about executing the strategy. Remember, the business strategy team creates the strategy, while the program office executes the strategy by breaking the portfolio into programs and projects. So they set up the program, do program planning, do benefit delivery, and close it. So the job of the PMO office is to manage benefits. Um, have overall governance and manage stakeholders in order to deliver the overall the, um, objective of the business. So consider the program office as delivering the initiative and consider the project manager as delivering the project that leads to delivering the initiative. Okay, so that is for project manager. I will stop here because there are 86 slides that I to go through. <laughs> and the, that will be done during your training. I'm not going to stress you right now because your brain will most likely be tired. What you need to do is just understand what project management is all about, what each role is, and where you fit in. So now that we have that address, let us now look at what the BA does, okay? Because we can see what happens within the program office. What does the business analyst now do? Because that is absolutely critical. Don't you agree? And I actually agree. Uh, uh, in my point of view. Now you have the BA business side and you have the BA technical side. I will start with the BA business side. Why? Now I will start with the BA business side <laughs> mainly because um, before the technical BA can start working, he needs to actually um, um, he needs to actually get a business case because you can't do anything without a justifiable business case. So there are BAs who create the business cases. And the BA's job is to justify why we are doing it, translate the business requirements into technical requirements, and communicate it back and forth until it's delivered. So you realize that the BA's job is not just is not managing. The BA's job is analyzing. He's a thinker. He's an analyst. He's extremely practical. 
you know, and he believes in facts and figures. So the role of a BA is very much at the early stage of doing feasibility study, creating a business case, doing personal analysis, SWOT analysis, port of five courses, gap analysis, using a number of BA techniques to create a justifiable business case, doing business process modeling and stuff like that. Now, once we have a business case, he now needs to translate that business case into technical requirements. And that is where analysis comes into place, where he identifies the key state. We work with the project manager to identify the key stakeholders, create, sets up a requirement gathering workshop and defines requirements. He might even need to create focus group, do customer journey mapping. And then he defines requirements using user stories from an agile perspective and creates uh, the functionalities and um, non-functional requirements and then ha works with the designers to create the wireframes, the key screens, the user journeys and all that stuff. And then he now translates all that into a what we call a software requirement specification which is given to the developers. He will now communicate back and forth between the business team and the technical team to make sure that what has been signed off is delivered. He will work closely with the QA team to quality assure what has been built and then he will deploy it. And this guy has to work very closely with the project manager because the project manager is managing the budget, the timeline and the resources. So if you think about it, guys, if we teach you only BA, you are in trouble because you are going to be working closely with PM. If we teach you only PM, you are in trouble because you're going to be working very closely with BA. That is why in our company, we would prefer to teach you both because when you start working on Monday, you are going to be relating with one of them, depending on which one you are. If you're a business analyst, you relate with project manager. If you're a project manager, you relate with business analyst. If you're a PMO analyst, you relate with both of them. If you're a project coordinator, you relate with both of them. So it's absolutely critical that we teach you both. So when it comes to creating a business case, the BA takes the idea of the stakeholders, the senior stakeholders. They will tell you it's a great idea, but his job is to make it a business idea, make it profitable, scalable, sustainable, in order for it to be a justifiable business case. And this is where we now start to teach you how to create a business case. Why? Because a business case is justification for the project you are working on. It's a deciding factor in going ahead with the project or not. It helps you assess the risk, viability, and the creative nature of the venture. So when I tell you to take your personality test, why am I telling you to do it? Because if naturally you are not an analyst, if naturally you're not business savvy, it is not a, it's not a bad thing. It's just a natural, it's just not who you are. You will struggle here. But if naturally you're a process person, if naturally you're a people person, if naturally you're highly organized, then you will excel well as a project manager. So this is why it's important that you take your test. Because when you start your training and we start with project manager and you're confused, well, you know that you have two more days of business analysis. If we start your training and you do project management and you love it, then you know that, ah, and then you do BA and you hate it. You say, ah, at least I've done business. I've done the project management. I love it. And my personality test told me that I'm a PM. And then that way, when you start working on projects, you know exactly what to focus on. We don't want you coming here wasting your time. We want you to come here and succeed. And so please follow the instructions we have in place. We have used it to help 4,000 people to secure jobs to date. We help 30 people get a job every single month. You read their success stories. So follow best practice. So. Um, I will stop here uh, because there's no point going through the content of the business case because then I now start explaining what that is. But you can see what the business BA actually does. So let's now look at what the technical BA does. Now, that's another thing as well. Some of you, you might actually realize that you're better off as a technical BA and some of you might realize that you're better off as a business BA. We are going to teach you both over here. We're going to teach you what a technical BA does and we're going to teach you what a business BA does. So you can see the difference between what we do and what other people out there do. At the end of the day, like I told you before, our job is to get you into the job market. Our job is to make sure that you have a success story because that is our unique selling point. So we must focus on what the market is looking for and get you equipped. Now, if you notice, imagine you had to create a business case for a digital transformation uh, initiative. If you don't even know digital transformation, how would you even do it? You might understand the techniques, but you don't know it. That's why if you, you can't analyze what you don't understand and you can't manage what you don't understand. And this is why we have to throw in digital transformation free of charge for those that are starting on the 25th, uh, paying on the 25th. So the, te the technical BA, once the business case is created, that technical BA now needs to translate that business case into 
technical requirements for the developer to build it and communicate it back and forth. For him to do that, he needs to go through what we call the requirement engineering process. And because most companies are using the agile development process, you would actually do requirement engineering from an agile point of view. So if you notice, agile will teach you about the agile methodology, but do you actually know about requirement engineering from an agile development process? That comes with experience, which is what you are going to learn here. So first, what is the life cycle of application management? Well, first we plan, we code, we build, we test, we release, and we plan again and code and build and test and release. And we plan again, it's a repetitive development life cycle where we are delivering on an incremental basis. So we build in bits and bobs and then roll out on an incremental basis. So this is, so Scrum, now Agile is the methodology. Scrum Agile is a type of Agile methodology. Agile Kanban or Agile Scrum, those are two separate types of methodologies. Then you have Safe Agile. So Agile has evolved into other areas. So Scrum, what Scrum literally means is that every single day, we will meet up to discuss what went well, what didn't go well, and have a Scrum meeting for 15 minutes. That's the only difference between Agile Scrum and Agile Kanban. But Agile as a whole, is a repetitive development process where instead of you building the whole thing in one go, you build it in bits and bobs. You plan 10%, code 10%, build 10%, test 10%, release 10%. Then plan the remaining another 10%, code, build, test, repeat it until you achieve 100%. So you're going through a repetitive development process and delivering on an incremental basis. Why? It gives room for feedback. It gives room for changes. So you're building a working software by embracing customer feedback, embracing customer changes, and actually not ending up building a product that customers don't want to use. We will teach you this when you start as well. So in our company, this is our own process. It is, you see, you see this is textbook definition. This is company definition. So in our company, we will have a high-level requirement workshop where we will gather requirements from the clients, but in our company, we use data now. We will now create a catalog of requirements. We don't even do use cases anymore. We go straight to user stories and, um, um, and Gherkin syntax, okay? Because we're now working within a, an agile environment. Then we then do our sprint planning, do initial user journey mapping, do behavioral driven uh, development, do define the business rules, create the logical process flow diagrams, define the functionalities, define the non-functional requirements, do final wireframes, do the key screens, and then we, the, so this whole process, this circle here is the requirement engineering process. Then we now hand over to the developer to implement it, build, test it, and then release it. Now, we are going to teach you this from scratch, so I am not going to repeat it. And the reason why I'm not going to repeat it is because some of you are already having headache. This area, we explain it properly. I just want you to understand that the BA's job is to translate that business case that the business guy, a business BA wrote into technical requirements, and this is the process of doing it. You will be taught this process. Now, if you're already scared to death, don't worry. Remember what I told you. If your test told you that you're a PM, you don't need to worry about this, okay? But everything will be taught in layman terms and you will have an opportunity to shadow experts and become an expert. So please do not be afraid. I'm gonna, that's, this is why I want to stop. Personally, I, I'm not gonna continue anymore because if I continue now, it starts to get really, really technical, okay? So I will stop because then I'll start to break down. So for example, you won't find this in a textbook. This is the real deal. So we do, now, so let me shut up. All right, so let, let's come over here and just stop here that the job of the technical BA is to translate business requirements into technical requirements and communicate it back and forth. So let me recap. The business BA, his job is to create a justifiable business case and create a process. Um, so basically, we want to move from a legacy system to a new system. Okay, do gap analysis. So look at the BA techniques that enables you to create a business case for this process and map out that process for us. That is the business BA. The technical BA will be somebody who is implementing, who is taking that business case and translating it into a requirement specification for the developer to build it. So one BA is business minded, another BA is technically minded. Now, if you are a BA that is both technically and business minded, you are hot kick. So just bear that in mind.
Okay, so let me now stop here for the sake of not overcomplicating issues because you have, we have done too much. We've covered the introduction to digital transformation, which on its own is a big, massive course. We've covered PM, we've covered BA. Let's just stop here <laughs> and not go beyond and start confusing people. So that said, let us start using this opportunity to start answering any questions that you may have. Bearing in mind that your training starts on Saturday next Saturday or any Monday to Friday in October. And all of these things will be taught to you from scratch. Bearing in mind that after your training, you can go back and listen to the videos as long as you want. After your training, you can also get involved in projects and see them actually applying what you have learned and you can contribute and volunteer. And over time, you will build your confidence and you will lead your own team, then get a mentor and get a job. So it is not, Rome was not built in a day. If you, the fear of God has hit, hit you now, just be patient. You will understand everything in due time. So I hope that today's session has been really inspiring and uh, it has given you a lot more information. And I hope that I'm able to answer any questions that you may now have. So I'm just going to go through it. Um... Okay, yes, yeah, so, so, and that's the truth. Some roles expect you to have both skills. I know that. Remember I told you about the comb shape employee. That is why we will teach you both, okay? Business and technical. We are teaching you both. So don't even worry about that. Just wondering the one-to-one -one sessions, getting involved in projects. When you get involved in projects, <laughs> don't worry, you will have a lot of one-to-one -one sessions, trust me, because you would always be working with somebody, okay? Remember that there is a group called Riva. So whatever project that you join, if I can look for Riva, so let me, I had driver open, didn't I? Um, all right, let me, let me, let me, let me open up driver. Just bear with me a second, guys. So application, driver, there you go. Oh, come on. I don't know why you, Ah, oh my God, I won't remember. Okay, so when you join your projects, you will realize that they are having discussions about that project. So you come here and you join the discussions on the project. Okay, so for example, this project Saturday, 9.53 evening, and they've had a digital business strategy meeting on Oscar's project. Um, they've had a, in fact, everybody attended the digital strategy meeting. I think that, yeah, everybody's been on the digital strategy meeting. So sometimes there's a project, on all projects, everybody has to attend a particular meeting. So once you get started, you can start communicating, talking to people. You don't have to worry about anything, okay? It's all about collaboration over here. Um, will there be opportunity? Oh, yes, there's opportunity for everybody. If you're willing to work, there's opportunity for you. KJ, my brain is almost leaking out now with two. That's why I, know, that's why I stopped. I've, I had to stop because there's so much information. And when, you're, when you start training, your trainers go through it step by step. They take their time. I'm trying to cramp so much in a little space of time. Remember, the training is normally 11 to 5 o'clock. So that's why I had to stop. And I don't want to overload your brain. I just want you to get an idea of what you are going to get. You'll be able to cope. Trust me. The train, you will love your trainers. Your trainers are so patient. They are so loving. And um, they're so understanding. Me, my brain works like a thousand miles an hour. So sometimes I think I talk faster. Than, a lot of people think I talk too fast, you know. So and that's why I have other training. Because some people will say, oh, I wish you're the one training. Trust me, you don't wish I'm the one training. Um, the only time you will love me training is once you've been on the platform and you understand what's going on. Then I take you to another level. But when I first start, um, like these sessions are okay. You know, uh, but when it comes to the in-depth, I get so into it that I forget you. So my trainers are very, very patient. They've been doing it for years. It's what they do for a living. So they teach you the basic. And that's why I don't get involved in the early stage training at all. I always get involved in the later stage training and maybe the early stage training to introduce you to everything because I created it. 
please i'm unable to check available projects that's because you don't have an account uh, if you're not if you've not your account has not been set up you can't have access you have to have paid fully to do that okay you have no it's not how many classes per week you have a one week intensive training program monday to friday that's your training done or you do four saturdays after that your e-work experience starts where you can attend projects 20 uh, basically 24 7 anytime you want just make yourself available also after the training sessions and uh, needs to move into experience the moment your account is created you join a project and you are part of that project so basically it's now up to you to get involved I am glad I attended this now. I have a clear perspective of it, even though it's all new to me, but I do have exactly. And that's the B. You will realize that actually I have transferable skills and I can get this job. All I need is experience. I like that thinking. Thank you very much. Let me look at the other board. I uh, can't get my results because you do, you're not logged in. Remember I told you, you have to log in before you take your test. I said this to you. Please log in. If you can't remember your password, send me your email or reset your password for you. Okay, good. I'm so excited. Can't wait to start next week. Wonderful. How do I get involved in projects? Also, can I swap a Saturday session? Guys, you can swap a Saturday session. You can swap a weekday session. You can do whatever you want. We're very flexible here. Uh, just make sure that you understand everything that you are doing and you make sure that you attend this next set. You ask for the next session. But in, to get involved in projects, I said it to you before. Log, once your account is created, select a project, join it. You will be added to everything straight away and you can get involved. It's all automated. Is a 90-day work experience online or classroom? Your work experience is online. It's called e-work experience. Your training can be classroom or can be online. You decide which one you want. Okay. Uh, is it 12 weeks of training? It's one week of training or four Saturday or four Saturdays, then 12 months or uh, um, three three months of work experience. Okay. Um I'm so excited I can wait. What time on weekdays? 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sorry, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday or four Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or are the sessions scheduled on demand or, or demand? The session, the training sessions are scheduled. So basic, but then you can do on demand when your account is created. Everything you are taught has already been recorded. So if you miss a session and you can't, you basically don't want to come in, go and listen to the recorded session. But if you want to experience a lecturer, then attend the sessions. If you miss that session, just look for when it's scheduled. Everything is already recorded but you will still have lectures. So it's like you have e-learning plus, plus, plus live webinars plus classroom. You have everything. You just need to decide which one you want to do. Yes, you can pay and defer your start date. We don't like it, but you can also do that. But if you're going to do that, it's better that you pay in full. If not, if you pay your deposit, then you would have 510 to pay when you start. Or you can pay 695 upfront, and then you can then start at a later date, although we don't like it. What if someone is not registered on the website to take the test? Does he need to? Yes, yeah, so the first thing you need to do is register. Click on start my seven day free trial, register, then go back and take that, click on that link and take your test. Or even, in fact, when you register, it will take you to the test straight away. So register. If you've never created an account, register now, you will now be able to take the test straight away. If you have an account, then you need to reset your password. I hope it makes sense. I'm registered for about 10 days now in Nigeria. Okay, so um, the only reason you won't have access is if you haven't paid. And if you don't have, you have paid and you don't have access, call the Nigerian office to set you up. On top, on, off the top of your head, how can digital transformation be relevant in oil and gas? <laughs> digital transformation is relevant in all sectors. Remember what I said? It is the enhancement of all business activities and all channels. So unless oil and gas doesn't have business activities and doesn't have channels, that is not relevant. And I'm sure that is not the case. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. I will only be able to apply for work after the work. You can apply for work before. You just can't use our company name until after eight weeks. Why? Because we don't trust you. We feel, much, we feel we can trust you a lot more after eight weeks and after you've been involved. But before then, we personally don't trust you. Uh, we just don't want you going to a job and messing things up. So please spend eight weeks, know what you are doing before you apply. I think that's fair, don't you think? How does travel affect the training sessions, e.g. to Nigeria? Uh, it doesn't matter. You, you, once you have, once you, you, are, you are calling online now. So if you are, as long as you are on, as long as you have internet access, you don't have a problem. It doesn't affect anything. The question is, do you have internet access?
okay what are the names of the training meetings on the calendar no your training meetings we don't we don't put the training sessions on the calendar we send that to you in your october group reason being is because we don't want newbies um, existing candidates calling into it and, and disrupting the class so we make it exclusive in the october group alone so all will happen is that um by um by i think by wednesday or thursday anyone that has not paid will be removed from the october group so that only the people that are paid are there then we will now start to send you all the meeting ideas for your training feel free to ask questions guys we have five more minutes and this session is going to is recorded I'm going to upload it on YouTube and allow you to go back and listen to it, okay? Uh, so that that way you can actually recap and learn all over again. Uh, so I'll make sure I do that for you. You can start straight away. Look, guys, it's all uh, the thing about it is that it's all about money. If you have six nine five and two nine nine, then you can pay for GDPR and you can pay for tr uh, the training. The only thing is that you have to have paid your six nine five before you pay two nine nine. If you want to do GDPR alone and you are not a candidate, it's eight hundred and something pounds. So you are better off paying six nine five, get project management business analysis, and pay your two nine nine, and then that way you have all both. It's up to you. But you can be patient, uh, get a job. As a digital project manager, and multi -GD, it doesn't matter. It's you, you look, do your test, know the plan you want to take, and then choose the package you want. After payment on Monday, your account is created, and then you start your training on Saturday, and we set everything up for you. Uh, how do I actually make payment, especially from outside the UK? You call the office and you pay by card. So you, as long as you have a debit card or a credit card, you call the office and you pay by card. Now bear in mind that the office will be the on uh, Monday. The calls are going to be crazy. So what you will find is that you may uh, when you call, if you can't get through, don't worry. Uh, my op my op advice is go on the October on the October group you're saying and say call me. I'm ready to pay, and then they will call you. Call me. I'm ready to pay. If you, that's if you've called and you can't get through, just type there. They will call you straight away. Okay, uh, because we keep our eyes on the October group. So anytime you want something done. Just say it on the October group. I keep my eye on it. My staff keep their eye on it. Um, you don't need a YouTube account. I'll just send a link to you. Uh, we will call you to pay your Monday, or you can call us. Can GDPR be done in class two? No, GDPR is only online. In fact, all our additional classes are online. Uh, but when I say online, you're not listening to videos. You're listening to a lecturer, and you also get access to the videos as well. Um, um, the DG Hub is launching in uh, October, so I'm going to have a class in Nigeria, so yes. Uh, but you are better off joining this class because the class in Nigeria is an intro class, it's like kind of introduction to launching the office. Uh, your CV will be reviewed by your mentor once you qualify for mentoring. So you have to go through the work experience, you have to complete your training, you have to qualify for mentoring through your activity on Basecamp, and then your CV will be reviewed. We don't review CVs unless, you, unless the system tells us that you're ready to apply for work. And that's where your KPI comes into place. You can't pay online, unfortunately. The reason why you can't pay online is that if you you can pay online, uh, it's one thousand seven ninety. The offer is only available by phone. October October group is on Telegram. So have you got Telegram? If you haven't got Telegram, you need to download Telegram. So go on the App Store or Google Play and download Telegram. It's very important that you do that. So you need to download an app called Telegram. So let me just write that out for you. Then you need to save my number and send me a message telling me to add you to the group. So I actually assume that everybody on this call was on Telegram. Unfortunately, it looks as if that's not the case. So let me quickly show that to you right now. So presentation mode. So what you need to do is you need to message me. Uh, you need to, so, so, I just change this to down. That's all. Those are we on a download Telegram from App Store. Okay, then activate it. 
once you activate it save my number as kv you are send me a message to add you to group simple that's all you need to do it's very easy okay How will I be alerted of classes on Monday because I have company email? You, if you're on the Telegram group, you'll be posted on the Telegram group. This is why we're encouraging everybody to get on Telegram. I've paid for the training in Nigeria and it has and it has started reading 86 days to go. Please, where can I get access to this? No, 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 no. If you're in Nigeria, you paid 150, you paid 40K. You're not entitled to this program. This is for those who are paying 695. Uh, in Nigeria, you guys get a sponsorship, which gives you access to the platform. So you need to start listening to your videos. You need to start getting involved in projects and you take it from there. But you are not allowed to attend the training sessions because it's 695 pounds. There's a difference between 40,000 Naira and 695 pounds. Yeah, we can make an invoice to your company outside. Yeah, we can create an invoice receipt, whatever you need. All that all can be done by the office. All right, guys, it's three o'clock and I promise I would finish. I think a lot of you have other things to go and do uh, as well. So but I think we have um, provided enough freebies uh, from last week all the way to in fact, we're providing freebies for quite a while. So by now, everybody is confident of um, what they want to do. So please bear in mind now that um, basically the freebies kind of stop. <laughs> so you're now making a decision to come on board or not. Um, if you're on board, you get a discount by the 25th. If you don't, then you'll be entitled to pay 1,790. You will have to pay 1,790 or uh, whatever deal we have at that point, which the cheapest will be 810 pounds. So please try and grab the offer before it ends. Um, and um, good luck. And we look forward to having you guys on board. And I'm very grateful that you all called in and I'm very grateful you all had a good session. Actually, let me confirm. How do you feel? Do you feel that actually this is amazing and I'm happy? Or do you feel like, hell no, I'm not coming here. Be honest, just type it. Let me get your feedback. Um, it will be good. So if you can have your feedback on Telegram, have your feedback on, 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 on GoToWebinar, that would really help me out a lot. Please, thank you very much. Okay, good. So I'm very happy that you all liked it. And um, I look forward to sharing your success stories by the special grace of God. And um, welcome on board, guys. Uh, welcome to Digital Bananas Technology. Welcome to DBT family. And uh, hopefully next year we'll be celebrating your son. You'll get a job way before. You'll get a job hopefully by the end of the year. But next year's DBT Awards will be celebrating your success story because the next award is in October. And obviously it's a bit too late to attend that one. Okay. Yes, you are definitely on your way to the top. I'm very glad that you all enjoyed it. Okay, good. All right. Fantastic. All right, so that's good. So if anybody wants to call me, please give me one hour before you call me. My brain is fried. I've been training since 11 o'clock, and I was working all night last night calling everybody on the platform. So I need at least one hour of rest. Then you can bombard my phone after that. <laughs> All right, guys. So we shall catch up very soon. Take care. God bless. Um, I'm sorry I've taken three minutes over your time, but um, I'm hoping it is just to answer everybody's questions. And we shall catch up with you all later on. God bless you all. And bye-bye. And I'll make the video available as soon as it's downloaded. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.